So now I'll stop talking about Kevin in a bad manner. Um, all right. <laughs> 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 well, before we start recording, I still don't know how to change my portrait. You have to before do it start. outside of the game. You have to go into your settings uh, outside the game. Restart the client, exit game, change your portrait, and yeah. then go back in. It'll update. There you go. That's fine. You're not it recording, actually, are you? It yes, might. I am. Oh. Okay, I was going <laughs> to start screaming racial work. epithets. Not yet. You can. All right, you boys have fun. I'm gonna take a shower and get all this Ben is gay off my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> See you, dude. Nice. Okay, bye. <laughs> all right. Um. So I wish Keegan to come play with us. That'd be fun. I know it would be super fun. Who? Keegan. He, he plays D and D. Just said that he's overcommitted with his other group. Yeah. It's because they LARP. <laughs> oh shit! I'm going with him. <laughs> That's it, dude. I'll show. I'll show up at your house with fucking like tentacles and eye and googly eyes stapled to my face. There you go. As long as Justin shows up with horns on his head too and wings <laughs> that don't actually work. I I suppose that if I duct tape my Morgan poster to my chest, will that work? <laughs> <laughs> Of I course. thought you had to get rid of that. Yeah, I thought so too. Did you not get oh, rid of it? It's never getting rid of. I just can't <laughs> hang it. <laughs> he keeps it like in a box, a locket under his pillow or something. A dead bolt. A, a cigar box and a safe. Key, the keys buried in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last time, uh. You guys finished up with Dasharunt, um, made your way into the Dark Mountain range, going along the path, Nernoth guiding the force, uh, guiding the group. You all met a new friend, another Warforged, that uh, is seven, eight feet tall. And nine feet tall, nine feet tall uh, only carrying a sword uh, and the outfit that it is wearing it identified itself as Ronin and Prometheus and Ronin hit it off pretty well sparks were flying it may uh, have been uh, gender fluid <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't exist this, this, world. <laughs> I mean, this world does have changelings though can you imagine a changeling being like I don't know anymore uh, I don't know why don't you give us some insight <laughs> yeah let's not <laughs> um, it's like here I wonder if I can transform into both at the same time this is going to be interesting <laughs> you guys made your way into the mountain Noticing off in the distance a large white dragon followed by two smaller white dragons um, circling one of the peaks. Then Are they carrying a giant cross with them? No. Then you continue down the path up into the pathway and were hit by a blizzard where you sought shelter. Uh, one of your party members, the lizard or the dragonborn, uh, having a really rough time with the cold weather and not wearing enough, clo enough clothing or sustainable heat. And while you were in this cutout, you were beset upon by three monstrous frost trolls. You guys easily dispatched those frost trolls, but before you got a moment to sit back and rest and to go over your new troll head and various other items you tore off of them, there was a large smash not far from you guys. So, perception checks? Yes. If you don't have dark vision, it's with disadvantage. <clears throat> well, that sucks. Let's see here. Disadvantage. Oh, fuck. One second, my shit's freaking out. There we go. Oh, I guess I still got... 
An 11. An 11, okay. Um, Hold on a second, my roll 20 just stopped work. No problem. I wish Under I could just... Completely unresponsive. I'm gonna be... Wish I could... Huh? I said I wish I could click perception on my character sheet like y'all guys could. Well, actually, I'm gonna... With the other group, I'm gonna be doing this uh, this testing thing to see if it is the character sheets that's slowing down the system for everybody and for me. Um, I don't know why we're using these character sheets again. Well, the, I think they're more organized than the other ones were. But even with the other sheets, I was still having a lot of issues. So what the other group is doing is they're playing... They're using the character sheet on D&D Beyond, and they're just going to be rolling in roll 20. Exactly what Jeremy's doing right now. So, All right, well, if that's the case, I have uh, 94 strength. Mm. I can still see everything that you have. I 24 have, million hit points. I have everything pulled up. Um, I'm armor class 42. <laughs> There it is. My weapon. Hey. Uh, Twenty. Prometheus, you see this large form kind of land about a hundred, a hundred and fifty feet from you. Um, you can make out kind of in this blizzard that's going on around you a extremely large form and these large wings protruding from it and oh. i need everybody to roll for initiative oh yeah we oh. got attacked by a dragon he's not how many spell slots did we rest no 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 nope. nope. oh, i got yeah, I got 24 health, dog. We're about to get fucked. I got my I got my backup character on my fucking. I, I've been working on him, so I hope I don't have to. Jake is not gonna wipe the party. I got you don't fifth. know that. Yeah, I got 15. 15. What's gonna happen is we're gonna throw the dragon board out as a sacrifice. Mama's gonna be happy. No, I'm saving him. He's, He's not fucking away. dying today. I. Then you can die with him. I don't care. No. <laughs> I will fucking slice you in the knee. So we can all escape. <laughs> Kirk, Kirk, Kirk hat definitely on the whole. Let's sacrifice the dragon. More an idea. <laughs> oh, would you look at that, Tristan? You're right in front of it. Darn. I know. I know. Just look at it. I just mission. look at it. Okay, would you no, just I'm, look at it? Oh, it's okay. I'm a dwarf. I'll just use my natural uh, technique. To I'm gonna use my it. natural. Katana slicing technique to the kneecap. Uh, we're all gonna make. <laughs> we're all gonna walk away at a brisk pace. <laughs> I really wish we were one more level so I could just use that tomb ability and jump myself off the mountain. Because it says if I take any damage. So in theory, as long as the mountain fall doesn't take more than 70 damage, I'll survive. <laughs> Okay, so this large creature Prometheus, nobody else has noticed it yet, kind of just lunges <laughs> forward and just breathes this breath, breath of ice just all across you guys, going 60 feet, which is going to hit everybody. Uh, uh, why are we in a... Well, I can't take like a chance to dodge it. Why are, are we in a straight won't... line? So it won't kill all of us. It's everybody, okay. everybody's gonna make a Constitution saving throw. Um, Prometheus, you can do it with advantage because you saw the attack coming. I'm impervious to cold because I don't have any nerves. You said Constitution? Yeah. If if you are resistant to cold or anything like that, uh, let me know. I ain't resistant to oh, shit. <laughs> oh fuck! Also, aren't you only like resistant to poison as a warforged or something? Yeah, I know. It's like, why am I not resistant to all elements? Because technically, be you're made of metal and wood. No, and just both metal. Of those things are subject to uh. Just cold. metal. What are you doing, Nurnoth? I got um, 
11. I have a hard time believing that I'm not resistant to cold, but I don't actually think I have resistant to cold. Um, you have, uh... You'll have resistance to cold when hell freezes over. <laughs> you would have you would have the resistance <laughs> in your true form. Uh, for sure. Or immunity, for sure. But... Well, I thought I'd have at least resistance to it. It doesn't look like I... I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say, for flavor's sake, you will. Uh, because... Oh, no, ev I do. Everything that you have... Constitution. Huh? Infernal Constitution gives it to me. Okay. Found it. I was just like, man, that doesn't sound... <laughs> How did the two Warforge fail this? Like, <laughs> the one... Even with <laughs> advantage, Anthony... Oh, you said advantage? <laughs> no, oh. only Anthony's, because he was the only one who saw it coming. Oh, yeah, dude, so... you rolled like shit. <laughs> what do I need to do, Jacob? Uh, constitution saving throw. Ah, well. All right. Good thing he's in front of me. He's gonna take all that cold damage. <laughs> okay. Curl up behind him. <laughs> Those of you who failed, you're gonna take. All right. What what was the DC? Uh, nineteen. Fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Those of you who failed are going to take 42 points of damage. Those of you I'm down. who pass... I'm dead. <laughs> those of you who pass will take uh, half damage, so 21 points of damage. Just, re uh, just realized uh, the room. 42 points? Yes. Oh, I'm dead. I'm also dead. You're knocked out. I'm knocked out. Negative... 22 points knocked out. <laughs> Super knocked out. <laughs> yeah, knocked out AF. Knocked the fuck out. Let me roll this for is Jacob's zero. way of This is Jacob's way of telling us that he's dissolving the group and killing everyone. <laughs> I'm tired of you guys. Hashtag no me too. Shit, or pound me also. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Careful, dude. I think your video is demonetized and flagged. Hey, I don't make any money off of it. Oh, Jules! Interesting! Oh my god, what's happening? He's gonna sacrifice himself for all of us, isn't he? He just froze to death. <laughs> oh shit, okay. I was talking to my wife for a cool. second. Um, okay, so two of you immediately go down. Three of you! You- it took out all your health too, Prometheus? That it did. I have 35 each. They're not. Do we just freeze in place or what? Uh, no, you take this damage, it blows you over uh, as this cold wind and ice just shoot from the mouth of the dragon, slamming over your body, knocking you unconscious. Uh, those of you that went unconscious, uh, Nernoth. Ronan, give me a death saving throw. Nernoth. Bitch. Uh, your turn. You passed, Ronan. There you go. I have no idea what to do. Our whole party is stuck. I'd run, in all honesty. Uh, That's probably what I'm going to do, but I don't know what to do. I would like to save all of you. Just, just dash. Just r roll two nat 20s on that bitch and it's dead. Who's this guy? Ronan. It's me. Pink is Ronan. Didn't Ronan just die as well? Yeah. Yeah, I'm dead. Sorry. Oh, yeah. You need to do your health bar. There you it's, go. It doesn't. It, it doesn't let me adjust it. I've tried to adjust it. It's not let me. Interesting. Have you tried just not being gay? I can't. Not. Can't. Well, physically impossible. We'll we'll tinker around with it. At some point. <laughs> okay. No, no. All right. So, I have a little uh, feather of something or right. Feather fall. Yep. Where is that at? Are you gonna jump off the side of the mountain? I'm sure gonna do that. I'm gonna fucking jump off the mountain. You damn right I am. Um, oh god. Well, there's not a mountain to jump off of. You're on the. You're basically I on the. You said I climbed towards the top of the peak. Not climb towards the top of the peak. You headed towards the side of the mountain, 
where you could try to find some kind of inlet like you did or a cave or something to be able to weather out the storm. So there's no decline whatsoever? No. You could always try like casting darkness and then running. You could. That's a, that's a good idea. But... Yeah. Okay, that's a great idea. Okay. I'm going to run. Huh? I'm gonna run this direction. Okay. And I'm gonna cast. No, I'm not. I'm gonna run. Yeah. <laughs> you're just gonna dash and run. Let's see. Okay. So you're. I don't want to waste an action. Yeah. I don't want to waste an action. I want to run. Right. <laughs> Pussy. So your speed is thirty. <laughs> Yeah, as a matter of fact, I still have another potion that I would have readied. I didn't declare it, so yeah. never mind. I can't do that, I'm just gonna sprint. So you'll you'll be off the map. Okay. Uh <coughs> Marv, give me a death saving throw. It has wings, it can just chase it. <laughs> Sure does. And there's also some people to eat, so if it's hungry, it'll come for you first. There's, there's one people. I'm made out of metal. You got I that death saving people. throw, Marv? Did I pass or fail? Did it pop up yet? Yeah. Constitution save throw. Is that the death saving throw? I thought it was the same math. Let me check. Oh shit. I, I think it's just a d20. Hey. <laughs> Two successes nice. is a when you crit. Hey, he's alive. He's alive as fuck. So if I remember correctly. I do believe you stand up with one health, but I'm not sure. Um, I, I mean, remember. do you want to stand up with one health whenever it's the dragon's turn next? I mean, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, we'll say you have one HP. That's fine by me. Nice. Me with my one health. Uh -huh. Bring it. One v one me. Fight me! You see that little sliver of health there? That little sliver? Yep. <laughs> barely I see, see the green. A hair of it. <laughs> Just barely see it. Let me get my magnifying glass out. God, hair of health. Okay. Dude, that shit busted my knee open. Holy shit. What the fuck happened to your knee? My gun hey, fell over. Why don't you tell me what you're doing, Marv? Oh shit, it's my turn? Yes! Uh. Alright, let's see. I don't have any spell slots. I. Uh... So you're laying on the I... ground, you're prone, so you can spend an action or half your mo or you can spend half of your movement to stand up. And then you'll have your action, half your movement, and a bonus action. On the bright side, I got knocked out, so I'm, I'm, and then I'm in my uh, fucking changeling form, so fuck. Alright, I'm gonna use half my movement to stand up, okay. and then 5, 10, 15, and then I'm gonna go ahead and dash. Okay. So that's 5, 10, 10 15, 20, 25, 30. There we go. Okay. Any bonus action? Oh. Uh, fuck. No, I don't have anything. I literally am out of everything. Okay. So, it's turn. So, it looks at the group of you, looks down at the three frost trolls, takes one into its mouth, and grabs the other two in its front claws, and lifts up into the air, and starts flying off. Oh, thank oh. Christ. What a pussy. Watch it just turn back around and be like, what, what the fuck did you say? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> who did it pick up? The Frost Trolls. The three Frost Trolls. Wow, nice. Um, Do I still have any? And it I do. starts flying off, and as it takes off, you can... Naranoth, you can feel this magical energy start pulsating from it, and this large explosion happens. Give me a perception check. 
Uh, Marv, you can give me a perception check. Nice. So shit. Hey. It imploded on itself like a neutron star. So the shock wave seems to hit the top of the mountain, and you start seeing Narnoth and Marv as the top of the mountain starts moving down. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> so, you guys, I'm going to give you three opportunities to be able to do something. Um, the cave inlet that you were in was about 15 feet, 20 feet deep uh, with an overhang and walls. That's one of the reasons why you were, you were pretty successful on your check, Nernoth. Um, so you found a pretty good little hidey hole. Um, but I'm going to give you guys three turns, the two of you, to do, do something um, and before the avalanche hits. Okay. Starting with who? Uh, we'll just say turn order, it's going to be Nernoth. Prometheus, give uh -huh. me a death saving throw. You can keep. Tars in the middle of taking a shot. <laughs> Fucking Christ! So legitimately, you can take. Uh, you can tell me what you're doing, Narnoth, while he does does his death saving throw. Uh, you've got advantage, tall god Prometheus. Oh, okay. All right. So, so how far away, away from roll. how far away from all these dudes am I now? You are. Let me move. Yeah, you are right here. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn it! Was that better? How uh, could I tell about how long I have before the snow is on us? Mm, yes, even with the lower perception check, you know that you've probably got about a minute before it gets to you. Okay, well, I'm gonna go run towards uh, the only person that I actually have any loyalty to left in the party, and that's the dragon. He's already he's still hiding in the inlet right now. Oh, Kevin's still in the end? Yeah, he didn't come out to fight. He was like, fuck this, this is too cold. Oh, <laughs> That's good too. So, he's still, he, I'm gonna he is in the farthest here, back. Yeah. Grab these two by the back of their... I'm oh, still alive. Whatever. Yeah, Marv's alive. With one health. Well, then I'm going to grab Anthony. I'm going to chunk his metal body over my shoulder, and I'm going to throw him into the inlet. Okay, give me a athletics check. See how far you can throw him. While he's doing that, I'm gonna run over Ooh! here and give. Okay. <laughs> you, it's like a damn shot put. You just yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just go launch him into the back of the cave. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hit. Uh, what was it? Eight foot? Or sorry, nine foot? Are you nine or eight foot tall? He's nine. nine. I'm gonna hit nine foot tall with one of these bad boys. Okay. Gonna go ahead and force feed it to him. Okay, so roll two d four. Pour it over my closed mouth. Do you want me to roll it or him to roll it? Goes in the eye. You roll it. It's your potion. You're feeding him. Just pour pour it into one of my eye sockets. Go ahead, give me a little sippy. There you go. Then the the battery kicks back on. System reboot. Am I still unconscious? Uh, no, you are not unconscious. You're... I, was, I was negative 22. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he brings you back. It brings you back to your eyes open up. Uh, the darkness that surrounded him doesn't exist anymore, and you're staring into this quite gruesome-looking face. Uh, I was about to say, my normal changeling face, just to imagine, imagine like, like a completely gray, really skinny thing with like white, white eyes and almost no mouth. Standing over just like you. A, you can just barely see a little line where the mouth should be. With this bottle. Okay. Um so tomorrow. Punch, we'll punch you right in the mouth. You're done. Uh Ronan. What are you doing? You're gonna punch him in the mouth? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay, well don't say it. <laughs> 
That's how Mar Marv died. Since the, as long as you do more than one point of damage, I'm just gonna fall unconscious. Avalanche comes and takes me away. Oh, dude, I got these. Is it my turn yet? Um, we'll say because these guys are dicking around. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run into the cove. Okay. And I'm gonna start trying to use my frost cantrip to freeze up the entrance. Okay. And Jules is putting his hand on you, Prometheus, and casting cure wounds. So it works that way. Why don't he just use his healing, healing uh, hands? Be brought back to life. Um, well, that's if his character lives. You know, we'll see. <laughs> so boy's got the healing hands. I don't know what's going on, huh? Uh, yeah, you were you were completely blindsided. You were kind of looking at the the head of the frost roll, and uh, all of a sudden, blackness surrounds you. So, uh, he's going to yep. heal you for 30 points. Um, Me? Yep. Lay on hands. <laughs> Putting his hands all over you. <laughs> and then he's casting Cure Wounds on you, Nernoth. Um, what else? What are you doing, Nernoth? You're, you're starting to freeze up the front. Okay. Uh, give me a survival check while you're doing that. Uh, Ronan and Marv, what are you doing? Time's a ticking. I, I am uh, running into the cave while going. Excuse me, I'm trying to. Not yet. Yeah, I'm gonna run into the cave. Okay. Ronan. Uh, I guess follow them. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Right. You see, you're seeing Nernoth. <laughs> see the <laughs> yeah, you can give me a perception check now, Ronan. You can hear it. That's the thing. You can hear this thunderous. Alright, well, yeah, it takes off for him to follow. Okay. All right. Uh, no, no, that was pretty good. So your your ice beam is going out, just starting to build this wall. Um, the ground underneath y'all's feet starts shaking. Uh, and you could feel the the power of this avalanche coming down the mountain. You can hear the the sound of snapping tree trunks as it just is barreling down towards your position. Um, you've got thirty seconds left. What is it that you guys are doing? I'm gonna try to get as far back in the cave as possible. Okay. I'm going to keep working with my hand trip to fortify the ice wall. No, no, you got another 14 hit points from... Uh, it's a daffodil. Uh, Jules. Freeze me, in the, freeze, freeze me in the wall. Prometheus, you got the 30 points. Did you add it to your health? Yep. Um, I showed Marv, you. Marv, Jules sees you hurting, heals you for 16. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just kind of slap him away and get, get your filthy hands away from me. He didn't... He, yeah, I guess he did touch you, but you, he still healed you because you, uh, no, he, you made contact with each other. <laughs> he, he touched him, all right. <laughs> He's like, I'm just trying to help, motherfucker. <laughs> touched him in the gooch, did a little bit of gooch healing. Robot boy, bring your penis over here. <laughs> um. All right. Okay. So <clears throat> free, freeze, 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 freeze me in the wall. wall. I'll fortify it. <laughs> Uh, you sure? <laughs> uh, no, not if you say it like that. Okay. <laughs> if you put it like that. All right, like no, enough. Give me one more survival check as you're trying to fin finish up covering the mouth of this uh, cave. Damn! Rolling good. Uh, yeah, you've successfully finished putting off or closing off the entrance uh, to this little inlet that you guys are in, and as you start seeing the dark shadow of snow push its way over the top of it, uh, it's loud. The, the thunderous uh, movement and the sound of all this commotion going around, it's kind of starting to get deafening as this roar continues over you. Um, is the fire still burning? No, remember the fire got put out um, by the trolls. So it's 
complete darkness then, right? Yep. It is pitch black. Um, Jules just kind of... Mother, motherfucker, somebody lied something! And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, gonna smack go her with the back of my hand, softly. <laughs> not to do damage. I'm gonna say, you idiot, do not light anything. We have limited air. <laughs> go ahead and light it on a breather. Oh, fuck, that's right. Oh, only, only us three need air. I just realized that. <laughs> uh, what seems like an an age has gone by as this <laughs> avalanche seems to just crumble over your inlet. The ice that you put up, the ice wall, successfully kept most of the snow out. Uh, there, you do see a few cracks form as the sheer weight of this avalanche rolls over the front. It is now pitch black and silence is in the room. All you can hear is the breathing of the three air breathers. <laughs> the three breathers. <laughs> uh, Fucking mouth breathers. The, the soft either whirl or clicking sounds of the gears inside the warforges. Um, what is it that you guys are doing? I'm going to go ahead and take a short rest. <laughs> okay. You can take a short rest. Uh, you won't be able to do a long rest. Am I yeah. conscious? You are conscious. conscious. Yes, you are. How long until the air runs out? Uh, give me your... Well, I have enough, yeah. yeah, give me a survival check. I can wait Thanks. eons. Um... You think maybe another two to three hours? <coughs> yeah, I like those odds. That only lasts like twenty, 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Maul into that that ice and start trying to break it so we can dig out. Okay. Um. Sounds good. Uh, Ronan, Prometheus, what do you guys? Oh yeah, I'm gonna, me I'm gonna meditate. Short rest. Short Am rest. I able to take three minutes for a short rest? Yes. I mean, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You're you're resting. Personal. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Give me one minute. Uh, Jules is like, "What's that sound? Who's who's banging on shit?" Um. No, not give me a strength check. Sorry. Hold on, just a sec. Got to put some salt. On. Salt, I mean, crushed red pepper, yeah. <laughs> no, just right. Give me a sec here. Let me look at something. Since technically primal savagery does acid damage, can I try to be gnawing my way through the wall? It would be hard to do that. It's the ice that he forms would be kind of smooth. You wouldn't be able to get a bite into it. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I have claws. I could carve my way into a little inlet and then just start biting. Not a strength saving throw, it's... no, not the strength check. Primal savagery is both claws and teeth. Damn! What kind of mod did you put on your character sheet, Justin? I haven't rolled nothing. It was about fucking time, is what it is. It's time for Nernoth to shine! <laughs> no, it's time for me to not get a one every time I roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Mm... We'll say Marv. Yes, you can try. You can try to start clawing your way out. Is it going to be like a frantic clawing, or are you going to try to be precise? I'm going to try to be precise with it. Okay. Uh, do you have so, dark vision? Uh, I I don't think I do actually. Okay. Let me look. Yeah, I don't think I do. Well, I'm gonna throw. Pretty my... sure that I'm the only one who can see in this well, right now. Right? right? Yeah. As of right now, Ronan, Prometheus, and Marv, you guys are doing a short rest, which means you're gonna have to sit there for an hour, not doing anything. Yep. Uh, no. So, only, the only person that's really doing anything right now is Nurnoth. Um, so, but Nurnoth, you're smashing your ice. Um, you start breaking through it. The ice starts shattering and landing all around you. The spell seems to start wearing itself, wearing out um, as you break it apart. You finally hit snow and after about 20 minutes of smashing. Uh, you've created a hole probably about two feet, three feet wide. 
and uh, you can now see snow. Don't know how thick it is. You don't know how far it is to the surface, but yeah, snow is now there. Sweet. Twenty minutes to smashing is a lot of smashing. That is a lot of smashing. Uh, Marv, you are now done with your short rest. So are you, Ronan? Um, nice. But Jules, Jules lights up his sword. <laughs> he does. He'll do searing smite and light his sword, and he'll see what you're doing, Nernoth, and walk over there and stick his sword into the snow. It quenches, but the snow heats up and starts melting in this kind of rush of like a bucket of water just being poured uh, comes into the cave. But you still don't see the top of the snow. Is it dark still, or do we see any light at all? Um, give me a perception check. Check that perception. Boy. Yeah, you see a faint glow. So is there still ice in the way? Yeah, there's still ice. Um, Narnos only been able to get about two feet. I'm going to throw my thousand pound body into it. <laughs> okay, give me uh, either an athletics or a strength. Fat check. <sighs> Twenty. Twenty. Uh, Nernoth, give me an acrobatics check. So the you're smashing and the sword goes by you and you hear the as the the running feet of Ronan and you oh shit this idiot and you jump back just in time as he smashes into the ice wall shattering it and snow caves in uh you are going to take Eleven points of bludgeoning damage, Ronan, as the no, snow <laughs> caves in over you. How many points do I get from that health potion? Uh, I don't remember. Is it twenty-four? Or no? All right, so I'm unconscious. <laughs> yeah. You don't get any health from short rest, right? No, you could you, you could have used hit dice. Did you not use any hit dice? No. Okay. Well, yeah, you're unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nernoff, you see in front of you is the wall of snow has now taken back everything that you had just been working on for an hour. <laughs> Every day we straight. Do I see the uh, the robot laying there unconscious? He's covered in snow. You can see like a leg, kind of hitting out or hanging out. But, but he's he's not moving though, right? He's not moving. He is surrounded by snow, and the, that foot doesn't seem to be twitching or trying to push itself out of the snow. <laughs> Can I see any more light than I could before? Uh, you see a you see a larger glow of light. Yeah. It seems like he he brought down a majority of the snow that seemed to be above the ice shield that you created. That was really stupid. It may have helped. Let's dig out. Come on, everyone. And I I'm gonna go start helping out. towards the glow. Okay. Through the snow. J Jules is gonna spend one of his last spell slots and give you eleven health back, Ronan. <laughs> <laughs> what a Fuck fucking you. dumb 
piece of metal. <laughs> Uh, Jules will start clumping your claw out as well. Prometheus, are you back? I can hear you guys in my headphones, so I'm still talking to my wife. Okay. Is there fucking wind going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> he can hear us, so we shouldn't say anything. <laughs> I love you, Tracy. <laughs> I was going to make a dirty joke and then thought about it. Uh, all right. So you guys start digging and digging. Give Everybody give me a survival check that's trying to dig. All righty. Survival! Uh, Ronan. 16. Ronan, you... Your large size... Uh, you're starting to push the snow away, and you finally put your robot hand out and you wiggle your fingers and it feels like there's no more snow around you. Um, it feels like the first time. <laughs> and you, <laughs> it's probably a good six feet. Do I need to... Can I push myself out of the snow or like no, stand up? No, you were just able to put your hand out. Oh, Can I strength check the shit out of it? Yep. Sixteen. Yeah. So you claw and put both hands out, push, and start wiggling your way out, and you hit out, and there's sunlight just pouring over you now. Let's snake my way out. Okay. Uh, the rest of you do see Ronan as he goes out, and then all of a sudden this hole that he was filling is lit. With this bright light. All right, crawl out with them. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I will do the same. Okay, and Jules is following behind you, and Prometheus is as well. Um, Fuck weirdos. But now you're the weirdo. Everybody. <laughs> you guys are. Now standing in this, what looks like an ice wasteland, you can see the tops of trees kind of poking in and out uh, of the snow in certain places. There's white all around you. The sun is shining extremely bright where whatever the storm was passed sometime while you were underground. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything of the path that you were traveling on in sight. It is always a good thing to see the sun. It's a good thing those turtle people gave us a lot of food. You saw the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Pizza. Let's get back to it. Um, give me who's who's gonna try to take point? I mean, you guys are now. We can still we can still see the mountain, right? Can we see? Can yeah. we only see this one peak, or? Yeah, you can see several mountains around you. Uh, you can give me a intelligence check. Ooh. Ooh. Or a wisdom check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have you have no idea. You're completely turned around. Um, Will I have any bearing on what's going on? I knew that was gonna happen. Yeah, you'll need to make e a survival check. So that's what a wisdom check is. Uh, yeah, you're able to find uh, kind of the bearings that you were somewhat following into the mountain, but finding the right path, you're you're not able to do that. Marv, are you, are you staying in your changeling form or are you changing into a different form? I'm staying in changeling form for now. Okay. Oh. 
It's good to see you the way you are. I say towards Marv. Whatever it is. Are you saying anything, Tristan? Nope. Well, then say, it, then say I'm not saying anything. We can't see you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying anything, man. <laughs> okay. I'm just hey, Jules is going to look at you. You you an ugly motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of look at Jules and resist the urge to cast uh, Crown of Madness. <laughs> Sorry, it was an important conversation. I'm back. You're good. Uh, you made it out of the cave. You're standing on the ices. Um, okay, so what do you, what do y'all want to do? I mean, y'all tell me what you're wanting to do. I want to go towards the big peak. Continue trying to head to the mountain. Absolutely. Okay. And the rest are we gonna go in any sort of order? You can move around yourself here. The new world order. I want oh, to God. not fucking stand in a straight line again, that's for sure. I'm just going to stay in a straight line since I can barely see you. We're heading north, upward. Jules is taking the back because he's freezing. I'm does... taking the back I have a bow and arrow. Okay. And then Ronan, <laughs> we'll just say you're right there, Ronan, and then straight line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that how we're doing? Uh, so... Actually, you know what? I want to be right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Narnoth, give me a survival check again as you try to pick your way through this now ice land. Uh, you're, start moving along what you believe is the pathway, pushing through the snow, uh, trying to taking your time as you're trying to check to make sure there's no soft spots and so you don't shoot down however many feet it is uh, that snow pocket could be. Um, you continue to move forward at a very slow pace. You don't feel like you're making a lot of uh, ground. But nevertheless, you are able to stay ab above on the top of the snow moving forward. Ronan, you are having a more difficult time. Give me a acrobatics or in athletics you cho your choice uh athletics <laughs> okay uh so you're you're 21 you're having an e uh, you're you can feel yourself sinking in every step you're taking and you're pushing in about a foot but your strength you're pushing persevering pushing through it um willing your body forward uh, to not nice. get trapped into the snow. <laughs> Snowplow? Uh, no. You're just... You're kicking up a lot of snow, but you're kind of leaving two deep, foot-deep lines as you're walking along. Okay. Uh, it's a... Give me a perception check, Prometheus. You can tell Prometheus as you're kind of standing there in the back looking around that it's probably close to about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You guys were under that ice for a lot longer than... Uh, I don't have like a built-in clock. No. <laughs> it, they didn't add that uh, add feature until Warforge 3.0. So you're still in 2.2. <laughs> Hey Siri, what time is it? Hey Siri. Um, uh, oh my god, that is fucked up. You want to see a fucked up picture? No. Uh, you no notice <laughs> Prometheus that it's probably about two o'clock in the afternoon as you're pushing forward, and as you're kind of scanning the horizon, uh, you notice kind of ahead of you a larger mountain that has a different kind of face in front of it. 
you can't really make out what the face of the mountain looks like or what what the details of that face is but it just looks different than the other faces around you all right something different about like it like a person face or like a mountain face mountain face Coming around the mountain. Okay, what are y'all doing? I mean, y'all still trekking ahead? Uh, I like, told you where that, I want to go. I is that the face? Little... I'm following the boy that seems to know where he's going. Okay, give me another survival check. Nana. It's been a couple hours since you started. Um, so, Nernoth, you, you kind of notice that the mountain peak in front of you is a little different um you are able to kind of find what looks like would be an easy solid path to follow going towards this strange mountain um i need ronin to give me another athletics check and <laughs> Athletics is fuck. Yeah, you are now starting to find your foot, and the weight the weight of your body is not shooting down as far. Your your steps are quick enough. Uh, you're able to push a lot of that snow and compact it and make a, a solid foothold as you're pushing forward. Uh, Nernoth, as you're leading the group. You start getting closer and closer to this mountain. You start cutting the time as the sun starts moving over and starts setting behind this tall mountain peak. And as I'm assuming that the snow is starting to thin a little since we're going up. Uh, well, you're kind of still heading along the side of the mountain, but it is starting to thin as you can feel like the edge of the, you're getting closer to the edge of the avalanche. Um, so yeah, it's starting to decline as you're heading towards this thing. It's not that you're walking up the face in the mountain, you're kind of beelining across it. So, uh, you eventually do it to what feels like solid ground that the, that's not snow compacted snow underneath your feet um, and you notice in front of you as the sun starts setting as this mountain peak starts to have a greenish reddish glow in front of it hmm. um, is it the aurora borealis <laughs> and this time of year, located entirely on this mountain, <laughs> uh, or is it magical? Do I can I do an Arcana check? Yeah, or... you give me an Arcana. It looks magical, but you don't get the sense that it is of a magical nature. magical but not magic it looks okay. like it could be magical it looks like it could be magic and that may be what the illusion is meant to be but it is not magic so y'all anything else anybody else want to pipe up say anything i just want to get to the mountain where it's warm <laughs> Or you think it's warm. Uh, you start moving forward. And you're keeping going there. Not to keep trying to keep that steady pace as the sun is setting. You don't want to be caught again in the dark in this area. Uh, as you start to round a the edge of this mountain. You now can see clearly. And I will show you. Rain is gone. That's horrifying. This large face carved into the side of the mountain and the, what looks like a large stone bridge in front of you. Give me a perception check, everybody. Ah. <sighs> 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 
<laughs> so, yeah, Marv, you, you're completely distracted by everything going on around you. You don't quite notice it. Prometheus, you as well, but Nernoth, Ronan, uh, you see where this green, reddish light is coming from underneath this bridge. You can't quite see where the source of it is, but it's coming out from underneath and then under the mouth of this thing. Uh, as you're standing there looking, Nernoth, uh, you can see shapes moving in front of the mouth of this thing. Ooh, shapes. Are there big shapes, small shapes, shadowy shapes, shadowy glowing shapes. shape? They hooded? Are they humanoid? They look humanoid, but you can't tell if they're hooded or not. You're still too far mm. away. But with that Yo, perception, you I see. see. Sorry, go ahead, Justin. I was just telling the party. Behold, I see people. I'll point towards the entrance of the mouth of the cave. What appears to be a cave, I guess. I don't know. Is it a cave? Do we discern that that's a cave? Possibly, yeah. It looks like it goes into the mountain. So. <laughs> that's the definition of cave. So, that's... yes, I will say cave. <laughs> okay. Man, you guys are a bunch of. Yeah. Dull, uninteresting bastards tonight. I want y'all to know that. Yeah, well, we're literally just walking through snow right now. Yeah, well, he just said yeah, that there's things in could... front of you. I, yeah, I'm talking to you, and not a single one of you is participating. You're all probably Let's fucking try around to... on your phone and looking at porn or something. Let's try to talk to him. Hey. Yes. Yes. There's shit over there. Yes, How far yes, away is there? There are people over there, not shit. Oh, they're people. What kind of people? Can't tell, it's too far. So it might not be PC. Let's have a better Oh. My mic was muted, that's why you couldn't fucking hear me say anything. But uh yeah, I see the same thing. Okay. So, uh, I would like to move a little bit slower, but not Sneakily, I don't know if my mic queued up there when I said that. Yeah. <laughs> it did. Um, do I know if this is where I need to be? Um, give me a history check. History's fuck. <laughs> His history's fuck. Yeah, you know that this is the entrance to Vonrum, the city of the Grey Doors. <laughs> Where Cassis is? Yes. <clears throat> this I is a city? <sighs> well, you've never been here before. No, no. Ronan, see, Ronan knows, kind of, based on his, well, his nat 20, he knows what the entrance to the city of the Grey Dwarves looks like for to get into the mountain. Um... And if I recall properly, he said that he knew where we were going. Yes. At this point, would I have the intelligence to ask him if this is where we're supposed to be? Yeah, you can. Okay, very well. <clears throat> Rodin. Yeah. Is this where we're supposed to be? Cassis awaits inside. <laughs> Very well. But I need well, my wounds need something. tending. We need to set camp. However, there are people in the mouth of the cave. We need to look. Then we can find safety. No okay. campfire tonight. The dragon will freeze. Y y y y yes, I will. <laughs> Sound like Yosemite Sam there for a second. Use your flesh, <laughs> use your fleshy bodies for warmth. There's that... not a chance of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not touching these motherfuckers. And... <laughs> Spoon or die. 
bone. <laughs> I, 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 I guess. <laughs> All right, well, let me, so let me I'm going to start engine. walking towards the uh, trench then on that note. Okay. Stealthily, regular... I'm definitely not trying to poke my head out. Like, okay, so let me ask you a few questions before I qualify. Okay. What does the terrain look like? Pretty rocky. There are... Looks like there's some crags and crevices that you could potentially try to... Do we have... Push into. Do we I'll have the altitude advantage, or no? No. Are we below? It's just exactly like you see the picture. You're kind of walking... You're not the two people at the front of the bridge, uh, but... The terrain is as you see it. There's the, the steep drop off now in front of you, and you're kind of on this back flat ledge. There's some rocks that are protruding up, probably about a good 10 to 15 feet um, throughout this kind of flat area. But it looks like it's been kind of been flattened for a purpose. Uh, you can give me a histories check. To see if you understand what that means. If I understand what what means, would you run that by me one more time? Why why the the land is flat? I know. Ask me. Yeah. You have no idea. <laughs> All right. Well, fine. I'll do it. Okay. I mean. Um, it could be for tactical reasons, is what you kind of get the, the feeling of. Okay, well, if it's as open as you're saying it is, then I will have definitely ducked my head by now, um, so as not to draw attention to us. Okay. I guess that means I'm going to have to start being stealthy. So, I don't get disadvantage to stealth rolls anymore, correct? Right. But it wouldn't matter, because for whatever reason, I suck at stealth. <laughs> <laughs> what are the rest of you guys doing? Oh, fuck. I'm going to try to find a place out of the way to set up camp for everyone. Hey, give me a perception check. Let's see. Nice. Yeah, Perfectly I average. You, you do find that there's these large protrusing rocks in the, uh, kind of out at the side of the mountain and, and near you that are tall enough that could hide you from the front of this entrance. Could I discern whether or not they've been able to, to see me uh, at this point, or are they still too far away? They're still too far away. Okay, uh, Prometheus, you, what are you doing? Uh, Ronan, what are you doing? Uh, we need to get a game plan on what we're going to do. Yeah, is it still like around 2, or is it way past that? It's it's past that, it's probably closer to 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. The sun's starting to set behind all the mountains, so the, it's starting to get really dark, sunlight-wise, but this light that's emitting from underneath the bridge keeps getting brighter and brighter. Hmm. There's no honor in striking from the shadows, but I also believe that we shouldn't just walk into the mouth of the enemy. There's yeah, gotta be another, I agree. Gotta be another way in. I just feel like we should rest up and yeah, come up with a plan. Whether it's I had mentioned going that, the front or and my wounds here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got. It. So we can see what's going on with uh. Marv in the uh, campsite situation. Well, if, if that's the case, I'm gonna see if I can enlist the robots to help me make ice blocks for an igloo. <laughs> yeah, let me, me igloo. Let gonna, me bust out my ice blaster. You're gonna try to build an igloo. <laughs> well, yeah, well, he's doing gonna, that. At I'm least just gonna dig into the snow a, a little bit, because the issue here is is that Kevin will die if we save him. Well, he's gonna got... freeze to death. <laughs> There's no way that he's gonna survive you because I am not. Warm enough. Maybe big spoon. 
While he's doing that, I'm just gonna set up a uh, my tent. Mark could be little spoon. Dude, I am an ice demon. Do you really think that's gonna work out? <laughs> just depends on. I'm <laughs> just saying, like, I mean, if those guys rub each other a lot, they might be able to generate some heat. But otherwise, they're fine. <laughs> because I'm, he I'm best icy. Get to Revan. Get creative. Yes, we need to build some sort of uh, shelter for dragon. Okay. What What is the jewel stay? Since your plan. <laughs> jewel. Uh, make it warm. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> make it warm. He's actually gonna. Yeah, Mike, what he's gonna do it. is he's gonna take his acid breath and shoot it all over the ground, and you guys can feel the heat of the acid as it starts etching its way into the stone, and he will lay on top of it. And that mm. seems to be doing some uh, somewhat of a job, keeping him warm. I grab a little bit of the acid and I put it on my tongue. I'm just <laughs> Pick it up with your finger, and the tip of your finger corrodes off. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. It's too late. You're stub too you're, late. You're now you stubby it. Prometheus. Uh, Old stubs. Uh, <laughs> I know. I don't even have a fucking tongue. Probably. You don't. Anyway, so let's, let's move on. Okay. Um, Marv, you're trying. You found the place, Ronan. You. What are you doing? Are you going to help Nurnoth try to build some kind of shelter? Yeah, I guess. Okay, Prometheus, are you as well? Yeah, I guess that's what we're all okay. trying to do. Everybody, yeah, give me a survival Marvel check. Or, yeah, the three <laughs> of you. So we accidentally oh, dropped the ice block on the dragon's face. and he Oh, wait, not me. Block. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, actually, it's a 12. Wow, so you guys are trying real hard to make this magic Five. ice form up into some kind of shape. Uh, having a real hard time. And the three of you, give me a stealth check if you're trying to be conspicuous. I'm trying to be inconspicuous. Inconspicuous. That was the word. I don't believe there's any honor in hiding in the shadows. Okay. So, you automatically fail. Uh, <laughs> the the two, the Naranoth, you and Prometheus, are still staying quiet, even though you're struggling. Ronan, on the other hand, is not. Uh, he's having a real hard time <laughs> with the... Trying to... <laughs> trying to pack the ice together. Uh... You guys feel, though, as you're putting the, the ice around, that you've be, built a decent enough shelter to keep jewels alive through the night. Nice. Um, mm, nice. Okay, so darkness starts to come in, and if everybody's going to take a long rest, I need watches. Who's going to take what watch? I'll take all three. Can't take all three. You're going to... You have to take at least one, and then your body is still conscious for six hours, uh, but you're not going to be taking the perception check on two of the watches. But I can still see, right? You can still see. So if, any, if anything happens, you'll be automatically alerted if that person alerts or moves or does something, or there's a large sound or something like that. Kind of like sleep mode. Yeah. You click. Yeah. So well, then I guess I'll start meditating, and then I'll take the last. Okay. Marv, you and Prometheus, and Nurnoth. I'm gonna I'll... take the first two uh, watches to sleep. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll take the first built-in watch. Okay, Marv. Marv will take all watches. So which one are you going to be actively paying attention on? Well, technically all of them. Why? Well, I guess you don't need sleep at all, right? I don't need sleep at all, and technically I, I there's there's no real reason for me to ever take a long rest. 
Right, because you Ever. get everything in a short rest. Yep, and even if I did, according to that ability, I can be doing light activity. Right. So I assume just sitting on a rock, right. watching people. Right. That will be fine. Ooh. So Jules is gonna is not taking any watches. Uh, he is trying to recover. Um. So from our Marv, you and Prometheus, give me a perception check with disadvantage marv with no dark vision man yeah the night seems to be going you guys can hear the howling wind uh move through this kind of valley that you guys are now in um uh, it's dark out and all you can see is this greenish glow emitting from the bridge um it's pretty bright but as far as trying to see around you marv it it seems like that light is just completely distracting you and blacking out even making everything darker because it seems to just absorb any kind of light around it all right. I'm just going to kind of look at the light and go, right, if only I could devour it. <laughs> just going to say it, kind of whisper it. All right. Second watch is Marv by himself. So, disadvantage. Let's see here. Actually, during my second watch, can I... It's like... Here, dinner. One moment, sorry. Alarm... So, you know, I have the, what was it, the Book of Ancient Shadows or whatever, or Ancient Secrets. Okay. I can cast uh, this as a ritual as soon as it lets me do it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cast that. Um, let me see here. I'm going to cast that basically. Can you describe, like, our the way from... The, what was it to the path that we came up to get to the camp um the ca the pathway it's not really a path it's just there's this flat area with these protruding rocks and then kind of a sloped face of the mountain uh that you found these two larger rocks that seem to block the vision from the uh, bridge to the, your position uh but you could definitely set out the 20 foot cube um, probably a little further in front of you, if you wanted to. If I, if I ca if I cast this, you know, ten times. Oh wait, no, let me think. Sorry. Three or let me think. So my my watch is about two hours, right? Yes. If I spent the entirety of that time casting this, just in where it has overlapping fields all the way around the camp. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Do you have enough yep, civil wire? Of... Uh, well, technically, what was it? As long as I have a spellcasting focus, since it doesn't have a cost on it. Since it doesn't consume anything? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to choose the uh, alarm instead of mental alarm. Okay. I'm basically just going to encircle the camp in this. Also, the only person I'm going to set it to not go off on is me. Which means it would go off at any time. If anyone but me gets within its radius. So you're not putting it around you. No, I'm basically surrounding the camp in it. I see. I got you. Okay. Like kind of overlapping fields around the camp. So there's, yeah, the two sections. You can do that. So they will overlap about five feet. and But your the two sections that are open are covered by the alarm. Nice. <clears throat> okay. So you don't give me a perception check, because that's what you spent your second watch doing. Uh, all right. Final watch is going to be Nurnoth and Ronin. Right. I should be completely healed by this point, right? Yep. Long rested. So 
uh, it's pretty pitch black outside as you wake up near Noth, Ronin. Your, your self subconscious has been working pretty well, Ronin, for the time. Um, and now you are kicking on this self-alert mode, actively looking for anything out of the ordinary. Um, the two of you are sitting there in the quiet and the cold, the wind blowing through. You can still see the brightness of the bridge um, around the so rock. see figures moving? No, you can't see the bridge okay. where you're at. <clears throat> that glow doesn't light it up? No, like the there's a rock protruding up out of the ground that you guys are behind. So you can't see the bridge unless you move, try to move around the rock. No, just silent. silent vigil. Okay, give me a perception check. Do you have dark vision? No. Okay. With disadvantage. Okay, learn off. Are you going to try to look for somebody, or are you just going to sit there and... 13. I'm more concerned with uh, making mutagens right now. Okay, so you're cooking mutagens. You going to make one of potency and one of rapidity. Okay. And I can actually use both of them. Awesome. Okay. So, the night... The sun starts Wait, coming up. I'm sorry. We haven't. What level are we? We're only level six still, huh? Yeah. Mine. I can only make a potency. Thought we leveled up to seven. Nope. Maybe if y'all had fought the dragon. I don't know. We'll see. I ain't get. I ain't get a fucking chance. All right. Right. <laughs> Four set me up. points of cold damage. Set me up for failure. <laughs> um all right so if we had beaten that dragon i had expected two levels for that <laughs> shit like three <laughs> you instantly become gods yep yeah all, all you gotta do two nat 20s that motherfucker dead uh <laughs> all right so the morning starts to come up uh at Towards the end of y'all's watch, the sun starts cresting the mountains behind you, um, bringing light to the valley. What is it? It's now morning time. The rest of you kind of start waking and stirring as the sunlight starts coming over your bodies. Do we awake feeling rested? Yes, feeling your presence. Full long rest. What time is it? Mm, probably about 8 o'clock. 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. Nice. Demon Did you say it's long Norm's rest on your character sheet? Prometheus. Do what? I was asking Nurnoth how good of an armsman is. An armsman? Fighter. Thank you. Sword fighter. The best. There's no doubt in my mind that I could single handedly cut down every dwarf that comes across me, but multiple dwarves would be a problem. I hunt monsters for a living. I'm going to take out my mess kit and start making breakfast. So Without a fire? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is a good point. You know, in theory, could I just... No, that would be that would be a horrifyingly bad idea. The turtles gave us a bunch of, like, Lambus bread. <laughs> Lambus bread. <laughs> <laughs> they did give you a bunch of veg vegetables and uh, non-meat. You non described it stuff. very specifically like the lamb bread <laughs> you said it was like a really really good wafer that would keep for a long time you said 30 days worth of food because it was special yep. 
One second here, let me look at this. I was sort of being sarcastic, but like, that is how you described it. Because <laughs> most food spoils within seven days, right? Um, perishable food like um, meat, Un uncooked meat would, yeah. Or unsalted Mr. meat. Oh. I thought I had an alchemy kit with me, but I don't, so no, I don't have any flame. God damn it. Okay. Oh. If you say you're the best of armsmen, then the front gate it is. Okay. Prometheus, oh, uh, Marv, Nernoth, and uh, Ronan are talking about we're storming the gates. <laughs> oh, I'm shit. Gonna... While they're talking about that, I'm just going to be like, well, not yet. But how many do you expect that we're going to run into the interest of this game? Can yeah. we can we see if those figures are still there? Or I don't know if he ever told all of us. I can't remember. Yeah, he, he, oh, yeah, he, he did. He did. Everybody. I remember now. Yeah. Thousands. Thousands. Yeah, millions. There was a, at yeah. least a million shadows. Crawling in front How of wide this was guy. that? How wide was that opening? Um, give me. What would be a good understanding of that? Let's see. Surely we can see how big this opening. Which would be a perception check. So give me a perception check, Prometheus. Can we well, if we look at Marv's gaping asshole and we do a comparison, can we see it from the camp, or do we have to make our way? You have to make your way around the rock. I'm gonna recommend we don't do that. Not yet. So we'll okay, we'll, we'll just say we'll well we'll just say for flavor's sake that when you were coming up to it, you yeah yeah you noticed it. Um, it looks probably about fifty to sixty feet wide. Okay. Millions, huh? <laughs> About two, I think about 2.3 billion dwarves. <laughs> All just sitting there waiting for somebody to come on their bridge. Just go up. The old dwarf just hits his chest and go, You what, mate? <laughs> Let's just sit back and I'll shoot an arrow in there. He's got to hit one of them. <laughs> Nat 20, Question. you missed. Yeah. Do we know if these dwarves are hostile? don't now you do remember do i know well hold on well i'll i'll, I'll help you all out if that's the question you're trying to think you do remember nernoth that when you were in hedeby Geralt was actually sitting next to a couple of gray doors he wasn't playing cards with those gray doors he was playing cards with a goblin but there were two gray doors uh, sitting at a table right next to him. They weren't attacking anybody. They weren't fighting anybody. So that would probably be your only... That would probably be your first interaction or seeing a Grey Dwarf. But um, you, when you and Antonius talk to uh, Nasher, the Knoll, uh, he was looking at the two Grey Dwarfs. Um, and kept looking at them to see if they were trying to listen in to your conversation. So that is the limit of your knowledge for the Great Dwarves. Ronan, give me a history check. All right, I'm going to let that nat 20 roll over. No. <laughs> um, you don't know. <laughs> That's as simple as I'm going to put it. You don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you this, that dwarves are fucking assholes, so I wouldn't be surprised if these guys aren't any different. I mean, I kind of look at, look at Rowan and go, I mean, you're not wrong. Okay. They're a bunch of racist pieces of shit. <clears throat> But it is my understanding that dwarves can be hospitable so long as you're not trying to cause trouble or steal from them. So we approach this problem head on. 
Uh, I recommend we wait. Given the numbers, I'm not sure that I disagree. Well, let's give it at least. I kind of want to do like look like I'm counting on my fingers. <laughs> About an hour and 40 minutes, give or take. Why is that? I mean, if you want to find out, be my guest. <sighs> Changeling, why are you so cryptic? I shouldn't have to explain my reasoning to a literal hunk of metal. Why should you explain it to me? Why should I explain it to you? Who are you calling hunk of metal? Not you. <laughs> You're cool. <laughs> Him. No. I'm going to use my thermaturgy. Okay. What are you going to do? I'm going to whisper at this guy. I thought you were hungry. I'm just gonna kind of look at him back and go, <laughs> "You're talking to the wrong man." It doesn't matter. I don't give a shit what he wants. I'm gonna start walking to the gate. Oh shit! Just <laughs> <laughs> gonna kind of look at Ronan and go, "Don't do that. Don't take another step." And what do you do? Are you gonna keep going, Ronan? Uh, there's step. Okay. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> <laughs> this loud, loud, piercing scream emits from this invisible area in front of you, Ronan, as you set your foot down. Um, <laughs> Keep on walking like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> that gate's more than 60 feet away. Right? It's trying to alert! It's trying to alert! Back door. <laughs> oh God, I, remember, I, I worked at Sonic once, and anytime someone would open the back door, you'd hear the alarm go back door. And it happened once, and my manager just looked over at the console and went, "I know what she wants." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the alarm is now screaming. Uh, Nerna, Prometheus, Marv, what are y'all doing? I'm just what gonna cover. What the hell is that? I'm going to cover my ears and be like, it should be over soon. Just give it 10 seconds. Jules is like, shut the fucking I'm... thing up! <laughs> I'm trying to sleep here! Don't fucking sleep! <laughs> fuck, where my eggs at? <laughs> oh my god. Uh... Which one of y'all motherfuckers made my eggs? So, Prometheus, <laughs> I guess that's what you're doing, is you're just sitting there like, oh no. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, what the hell? No, no. Oh god. Oh fuck. I'm going to duck, and I'm going to instantly cast all of my rights that I can. <laughs> Cut it. You're just cutting yourself all over. <laughs> I, got a, I got a belt. I'm not afraid. To no, it's, it's one cut, and then, then I'm casting Armor of Agatha, and then I'm getting battle ready. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and, and pop in my mutagen of, of potency, <laughs> so I don't have to adjust my strength level. Carves a bunch of wieners into the skin. Uh, <laughs> the only wiener is if I carved a picture of you. Woo! <laughs> uh, so it's pretty soon, the 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 piercing noise dies out, and all you hear is the wind blowing through. What are y'all doing? I guess we're making our way to the mountain. Yeah, it's a little mountain where the whole bridge is. Y'all are gonna oh, right around the corner. Y'all are gonna I'm already... keep going for it. Okay. No, no. Actually, I have this great idea. I want to throw my voice. Okay. I'm already, I'm already cool with the dwarves, dog. I'm gonna use thermaturgy to to make what that face in the mountain appear to to talk. That's where I'm gonna... the source to come from. I'm going to look at him. I have seen him cast Thaumaturgy before, right? Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna be like, I have a better idea, and I'm just gonna kind of wave my hand and do this, and, and create a basically the perfect image of Nernoth right in front of him. Okay. A bit of flame. And, like, and be like, you know, in, instead of it just talking, doesn't it need to move as well? Picture of me in the mountain. That's a horrible idea. No. I'm going to look at him. I'm going to look at him and go, I hate dealing with idiots. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, no, I make an illusion of its mouth moving. You said that it looked a perfect image of me. I'm just showing you that I can cast it. That I can create an illusion. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay, very well. That's fine with me. Ronan, um, give me a perception so, check. Yeah. <laughs> So y'all, y'all start is... heading off. Jules is like, oh, okay, okay, okay. The, the range of your spell, there's only thirty. Thermaturgy has a much farther range. Oof, oof, that is right. I'd have to get up pretty close. Okay. Uh, Ronan, as you're getting closer to the bridge, you can see at the mouth what looks like about six shapes. Um, kind of standing there. They're not moving. You can't really tell which way they're facing, but they're just standing there. And what you also notice as you're walking up closer to the bridge is that the green light is still there vaguely, but it looks like there are huge fire pits of this green flame down in the cavern or in the ca uh, canyon below. Okay. Um, are you going to continue walking across, trying to go across the bridge? You're now at the, fr the front of the bridge. Can we tell if there's any sort of threat? Uh, give me a perception check, Prometheus. Uh, Nurnoth, you and Marv are talking during this situation. Um, Jules is just hanging out. No, you can't tell if there's a threat or anything from where you're at, Prometheus. But you are about 60 to 70 feet away from Ronan. Okay, I'm down to keep trucking. Okay. Yeah. Nurnoth, you and Marv, you all seem to have now come up with that plan of we'll try to get close enough to make the mouth move. I'll cast Thaumaturgy to make the voice or the mouth of the um, mountain talk um you guys start pushing forward yeah i'm gonna make my way to the gate okay um are the are you the rest of you I guys just... heading towards the bridge as well just just double check in i yeah, am ready i mean i'm bad already so yeah okay. i'm gonna be like nerd off before we go what exactly are you gonna have it say Well, of course, I need an introduction. <laughs> I, I've got, I've got an idea. So we're gonna make the thing talk, correct? I'll make it look like it's talking. You'll make it sound like it's talking. But what if, while ever, whatever you're telling it to say, each one of them also heard something else in their head? Mm, that's intriguing. But what do you want to say? What, what were you going to have the thing say to them? Stra a strange group of people are seeking... Vitality. Seeking what? Want to be met, meet them with kindness. The mountain god speaks. Alright. What if we told each one of them... Uh, we told them that out loud, but in each one of their heads we told them that the other, the other one planned on killing them. And that they and that they should be wary. So that each one believes that the other one wants to kill him. I could potentially see that backfire. I'd rather take a more direct approach. Yeah. If it ends poorly, then at least we got a narrow fighting pass. It'll be like Sparta. The hell is Sparta? 
I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I had a dream about it. What the nine hells of Sparta. Okay. I never Stop stopped, moving. by the way. I... Yeah, I know. You're you're moving. So as you're traversing this bridge, Ronan, you do see that it is pretty well crafted. Uh very intricate detailing seems to be going across this bridge. Uh, stonework, runic patterns of a sort. You can't understand anything or see anything um, that you can make out from it. You, as you're getting closer, the six figures uh, are standing there looking at you, um, not making any kind of move. They're just looking at you as you're moving up. Um, you... Anything you are wanting to do, you're just going to keep moving? Yeah, I'm going to approach them. Okay. Um, before we get to that, the other people... You guys are now about... Narnoth, you, Jules, and Marv are probably about... 200 feet away from Ronan. I'm just now getting to the mouth of the bridge. Prometheus, you're about right in the middle of the bridge. Great spot to be. Well, it's a little late to back up now. I'm sure they see us, so, uh, you know, maybe we Charge. ought to just walk up. <laughs> I'm going to still kind of stay somewhat near the back. Swiftly arrow if I need to okay. on alert. Ronan, as you're getting closer, you notice a few doors. Let me. You can now start seeing the the detailing of the armor. These are very heavily armored uh, doors, probably standing about four feet tall. Um, loaded out with weapons and shields um, you see one dwarf that's standing a little taller in this all black armor uh, she, it's got a helmet over its face but you can see this red beard kind of hanging out below it um, the but the, even the beard has armor covering it uh it's holding this gigantic warhammer on kind of resting over its shoulder looking at you and it puts a hand up and says "Holt, who goes there say i've known as ronin and i seek passage into the mountain and what brings you to vonrum Just an explorer looking to trade. Hmm. And your friends? Prometheus, you can my... kind of hear him say friends uh, louder. You can't hear anything else, but <laughs> you can hear that. The, the rest of you, it, the wind's blowing too much. The voice isn't traveling as far. You... If you're talking about the Warforge, yes. The others... Are more of just travel mm, yeah. companions. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, we will wait for your friends to come here, and then we will see. So yeah, so I'm gonna keep on uh, walking. Okay. Prometheus. My weapon's not ready, but my hand is definitely holding my maul. Okay. But I'm holding it more towards the end of it instead of on the uh, handle. Is it going to be right. kind of like over your shoulder, or are you using it like... Nah, I'm more like holding the handle up towards... It. The handle's going up the length of my arm, so... I gotcha. The maul is down towards my feet, like the head of it. Gotcha. Obviously, I always have one ready, but like I'm not trying to obviously be <clears throat> aggressive, but... but. I do have it in my hands. That way the right doesn't fade. Okay. Uh, I always have my hand on my sheath. Yeah, I figured. 
Uh, Marv, are you approaching? Just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and have my hand, one hand behind my back, just kind of curved in the position, ready to cast Eldritch Blast. Okay. Um, Prometheus, give me one more perception check. How come he's the only one who gets to look? Well, you can give me a perception check too, then. Huh. Marv, I want to see what's going on. Marv, give me. I'm being cautiously aware. Well, Anthony just said that he had to restart his internet anyway, so give me a perception check, Nerno. Motherfucker. I almost gave you a performance check. <laughs> uh, Marv, you kind of start, start peering being. over the bridge as you're walking up, and you see these large cauldrons under underneath uh, the bridge, and next to them are probably about 20 catapults that are all loaded and just sitting there with a large group of guards the catapults some of them seem to be pointing towards the bridge others seem to be pointing towards that um flat that flat area in front of the bridge where you guys just came from um so, you, say, you say underneath it yeah so the rest of you guys finally make your way up to Ronan. He's kind of standing there patiently. The guard, the guards don't make any com com communication with you, Ronan, as you're standing there. He doesn't ask any more questions. He's just s holding his gigantic warhammer that looks about the same size. The head of it is the same size of his torso, so about three feet in length uh, <laughs> and about two feet wide, the face of it. Um, God damn. And... He's just waiting until the rest of you guys approach and stand there next to him. Uh, I may not be able to make the facial expression, but I'm smiling right now. That's what I'm going to say to him. <laughs> <laughs> and he just nods. <laughs> he doesn't say anything. He doesn't give... It doesn't seem like he cares anything about anything, just doing his job. Uh, he looks at the rest of you and... What brings you to Vonrum? <sighs> well... You want the long story or the short? The long would be better for your health. We're on an errand by the king, and then I will proceed here because I don't remember all the details, but I'll explain to him that we've been chasing a demon, that we're on a long quest, and that there is a slave trade route that uh, we were made aware of, and mentioned that it pointed towards the mountain, and we came to investigate. We were hoping for a peaceful investigation. Hmm... <laughs> Well, that is interesting. Hmm. And he kind of just seems to be mulling through your words and the explanation that you just gave him. It's a lot of information, you know. Um, do you do you go into specifics about who you're traveling with? Do you go into specifics about? Um, or you just give kind of the basis of what King Robert gave you. It's a brush over of what King Robert gave us. Okay. I'm back. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to go into details unless he asks questions. It's usually safer that way. I know. Tell, tell him about the man that I'm can just summon wondering what him. happens. Oh. <laughs> tell, tell him the man that can summon portals, is what you said? Oh, the tentacles. Oh, tentacles. <laughs> Uh, it, what seems like a minute. You guys can hear me, right? Yep, we can hear you, yes. Anthony. Miss anything important? Uh, everything. No. You're dead. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, you guys are now standing in front of the guard in front of this, uh, entrance. Everybody... I remember that. Everybody can give me a perception check. Oh, fuck. And so it begins. God damn it, that was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There you go. 
Oh. I hate the fact that performance is right next to reception, and every time I almost hit it. <laughs> Prometheus, you oh. and Marv, y'all now get a clearer view of this uh, carving in front of you. It looks like a giant dwarf head. Um, the entrance goes right underneath the bottom of the chin of this large dwarf head. And now that you're closer, you can see where the eyes are, are just black circles. But Marv, with your perception check, you can see that there's a few more guards standing up there with what look like crossbows. Um, and in the nose hole as well, what looks like a ballista. Um, oh, God. <laughs> I kind of go ahead and mentally talk to Narnoth and go, we should, we should choose our words very carefully. <laughs> We should live here with these guys. Um, Just tell, like, using my freaking uh, telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if only we had a cool dwarf. <laughs> um, if only that dwarf had survived at least one more round so I could cast Spare the Dying on him. Or not, or remembered to be resistant to poison. Um, so he looks at you, Nernoth, and nods his head. Well, my grandfather and the King Robert go back quite an age. It, the founder of the Walpole was somewhat of an ally. Hmm. Perhaps I will allow you entrance into Valderham, but you will be under escort until you meet with my grandfather. And he puts the hammer down, boom, and some of the rocks around his feet kind of lift up. You guys notice as he pushes it down to these white runes light up all along the face of it. And he reaches up and pulls off this black helmet. And this is what he looks like. Um... Nernoth. Are you are you dead? Oh no. It is just the color of our skin. <laughs> Nernoth, he looks extremely familiar. Um, David David Diggle. How familiar? Will I be excited to see him or, or scared to see him or angry to see him? Or confused. What? Because you thought you okay. buried him. Is that freaking <laughs> He what? looks at you and says, I am Porus. I am son, great grandson, I am grandson of Krongrum, Lord of the Vonrum. I thought you were dead. Well, I am not dead. I... You remember me? This would be the first time we've met. Interesting, as I remember you. Okay, let me roll something real quick. <whistles> Alright. He looks at you, kind of narrows his eyes, and looks around at the other guards and waves them away. And the five other guards turn and head back into the into the entrance of the cave and he puts his hand the two hands kind of resting on the top of the hammer and says um have you seen one that looks like me out in your travels well we had a dwarven companion that was unfortunately killed in a in a in a, a match earlier he wasn't very smart, and he was very homosexual. So I would say that he was not very much like you, but... He kind of glares at you. Uh... Because that would be Meriden, right? <laughs> That's not in character. <laughs> I'm trying to... I was trying to say something, and then, like, the whole... Him knowing the, who the homosexual dwarf was <laughs> <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Just ruin a very serious moment. It's whatever. 
<laughs> uh, he says, the, you were talking about Meriden, right? Uh, yes. Uh, Dave, your mic's off. Trying to talk to us. He met his demise. Hmm. Actually, there's a reason for that, because David wouldn't stop mumbling under his breath about the game, so he got muted. Oh, he's muted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I gotta listen to you guys talk. You don't gotta listen to me. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to accomplish something, and your commentary doesn't help. <laughs> um, he... Give me, um... Everybody give me a perception check again. Um... As you're, as you're looking at this guy. <laughs> Just look at him. Yeah. Marv, you see the look of sadness kind of go into the eyes. There's not much of a emotional feature along his face, but his eyes, you can just see kind of his eyes just start looking a little sadder. And he... I'm just going to go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to mentally tell him he uh, died after being poisoned by a spider and we couldn't help him in time. He's buried in a, f he's buried in a clearing in the forest. Oh, yeah, that's what happened. I was trying to remember what happened. <laughs> it's uh, been a while. I'll, I'll give him the details uh, about the... What were those spiders called? The phase. Void spiders? The phase, phase spiders. Phase I'll spiders. let him know that we met, met a swarm of phase spiders and uh, we did everything we could but couldn't rescue him. He nods his head and says, well, it is very well. He was my youngest brother. Uh, I will pray for him. Maybe he will find his god. But it is a good thing that he is not with you. My grandfather does not like him too much. And my other brothers don't as well. I... I could stand him. Just a little bit, though. I'm going to ask him. You wouldn't, you wouldn't happen to know the uh, Ruby Miner family, would you? Hmm. He tries to remember. Nope. He looks at you, shakes his head. No. Who are they? No one important. Okay. Well, my job is to stand guard to the entrance of our city. I will give you passage. One of my guards will stay with you until you meet my grandfather, which is customary. If you don't meet him, you don't leave. You can t bring up your case to him. Perhaps... He will allow you your investigation. Um, but it is not my call. I will give you entrance, though. Remember this. As you go through the cave, stay to the left. Do not ever hey. take the right path passage. May I ask why? It will lead you not into Vonrum. You have a Balrog problem. I'm looking for work. <laughs> we handle most of the creatures that live in the dark. Perhaps deeper in the mountain you could find something. There are guildsmen, minor guildsmen, that are always looking for mercenaries. And he does give that pause. <laughs> looking you guys over. I've got one more question. Hmm. Do you have another hammer like that hammer? I love that hammer. <laughs> well, no. This is a one of a kind. But we have very skillful blacksmiths that you could pay. Perhaps you may get as good as this. And he swings it up one-handed. <laughs> and now the runes are blazing uh, as it looks at you. Does anybody read Dorvish? Uh, I mean, I could, but not right now. I think I do. 
Actually, actually wait, do I? Do I have this? No, I don't. If you look on D&D, figure that out. Yeah, I don't think I put it in your character sheet. Let me see. Give me a minute. Yeah, you do. It, okay. It's on your roll twenty sheet. I put it in there. Oh, okay. Ronan, are you not saying anything? You're just standing there, silent guardian. Yeah. Yeah. What's on the, What's path, on the path to the right? He, that's what he said. Was that um, it takes you deeper into the mountain? Is basically what you get the gist of. It doesn't take you to the city of doors or gray doors. Um. That's... Um. Go ahead. Cassus is in the city. Mm, as, far, as far as we know. Yeah, as far as you know. That would probably be the first place to start looking. Um, and so what you see Prometheus as he puts the hammer up and starts growing, glowing bright is the, the very clearly this will bring death. And... Very clearly, what? It says, this will bring death. This will bring death. Oh, shit. Um, so, so we can make a hammer that good. Maybe. If we pay some. If you pay, if you have the money. If you have coins, I have wares. Uh, Is there something special about that hammer? Yeah, it's magically imbued with some kind of magic. You get the gist that that thing will probably fuck you up if it, if it hits you. Um, so he turns around and says, all right. And starts speaking to one of the guards in Dorvish, uh, nodding at you guys. You you see this dwarf kind of walk forward, this glowing blue mace, um, or flail, sorry, as he comes up to you, or Morningstar. Sorry. It's a flail. Flail. It's late. My brain's thinking of other things. And he looks at you and says, follow me. And turns around and starts heading into the entrance to the cave. Uh, well, let's go. Yeah, I'll start following. Uh, as you guys start going into the cave, there are no torches to light the path. Uh, it is starting to get darker, and those without dark vision are starting to have a real hard time seeing bum, bum, what's in bum. front of them. So, especially, especially me. How long have we been walking? Uh, well, you always have dark vision. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, you said it's like, kind of hard to see. I said it's especially hard to see me. Like, if we've been walking for actually, an hour, I've become a... Anybody, anybody can't see dark vision, right? Well, actually, you are invisible to th things that do have dark vision in the dark. Things that do have dark vision. Oh, yeah, okay. they're not... Uh, the other warforge that is with you, Prometheus the Archer, disappears as you start going into the darkness. Uh, he is extremely hard to see, and then as the full darkness starts incorporating, you can't see him at all. Um, he just blends in to the framework. Uh, it is now dark, Marv, Ronin, and now Jules. Um, what... Are y'all gonna try to light a torch? Are you gonna what do you what are y'all gonna try to do to either see or stay up with the group? Because the dwarf is moving, and he is doesn't seem to be waiting anything. for anybody. Is there like a wall along the left side I can put my hand against? Yeah, there is. I'm gonna go ahead and just put my hand against the left wall so I can just keep following it. Okay. So, <clears throat> does someone have a torch? Um, Jules doesn't. I do not either. So it looks like you are in shit creek. <laughs> so Could what are you going to do, Ronan? Ignite my sword. Yeah, you, your sword will emit light for about five minutes. And then... Uh, yeah, I don't... I, I'm just trying to, just trying to feel my way down because I'm going to waste it. Okay, and Jules is doing the same. He's kind of holding on to the back of you, Ronan, kind of towards your ass, you know, grabbing a handful. As you... A handful of metal square. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, let me delete everybody that's dead on the next page. And move everybody that's still alive. Okay, so you are now in the caves of the Dark Mountain. Um, I'll move you here. Okay. I'm just going to keep on trekking, trekking since I don't get tired. All right, Nernoth, what are you doing? I'm still following the dwarf. Okay. Prometheus, you're kind of... Right there. We'll, we'll say Prometheus, you kind of take up the back. Um, That's gross, man. Yeah. Just say everybody's kind of following a line. Um, <clears throat> running a train. Guess I'll make conversation with the said Grey Dwarf. I'll ask him why they don't use torches. We can see in dark. That it? Yep. Man, you guys are real fucking talkative tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, man. I'm not. Not feeling it tonight. It's okay. Um, do we need to take a bio break or anything? Yes, we need to take a break. Okay. I'm Let me down the rest done, of this I'm monster. I'm done at midnight, though, guys. Like, 100% done. Oh. It's okay. All right, let's take a five minute. Everybody... Get back at 11.05. Mute yourself if you're bouncing, and then unmute yourself when you get back in. So we can start. If I bounce in place, do I still have to mute myself? Yes. <sighs> Why are we here? Is it just to suffer? <laughs> of course. Uh, I miss Meriden. <laughs> I had this whole thing Coming planned Meriden. for Meriden, and now you fucking had to let him die. Technically, Technically Meriden's remains are still there. If you could find a powerful cleric to come by and be like, yo, get this soul back in this body. <laughs> yeah, that's On probably. the bright side, at least your soul isn't in hell, which I'm pretty sure what would have happened if that amulet hadn't come off. Hey, he probably would have went to the abyss, not in hell. Oof. This robot's not doing it for me. It's not? It's not Doug, just use your robo way. Why? Just. It's not just not. I have this whole character fucking, fucking built for Meriden. Like. Just. It's, just, it's, where, it's where home was. <laughs> it's where home was. <laughs> Country roads take me home. I think it's been going pretty well. Thought you guys were gonna uh -oh. actually try to fight a dragon. Uh, well, uh, well, I, I, I would. I would. Yeah, I would. Three of us went down. But... Three of you. Three out of five of you went down instantly, and yeah. the other two were half health. <laughs> We weren't making it out of that bad boy if we had to fight it. I was like, oh god. Well, it's a good thing I planned the way I planned. But if you guys had decided to fight it, it may have been a different story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I only got four health potions left. I don't know what. Next time. Sorry, go ahead. Next time we get to a city, that reminds me. So, what was it? According to the in the what was it? Xanthor's Guide to Everything. They have rules for making health potions. You know, okay. it says a standard potion takes one work day, but also in that same chapter, it says that a work day is eight hours. Mm -hmm. My character doesn't need to sleep. Mm -hmm. It doesn't suffer exhaustion. And if a work day is eight hours, could I spend literally an entire twenty-four hours, which would be Technically, three work days making potion. Yes. Nice. But that's all you're doing, like. Yeah. 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 I'd be fine with that. Just literally, just in there. But you would need the ingredients too. Do you have enough ingredients? 
not, well, not on me right now. Of course, I'd have to buy ingredients. Because if I remember correctly, for a standard health potion, it is 25 gold to make a normal one. Right. But they, but also, they sell also sell for 50, which means, which means in theory I could make... What was it? I could make a net profit of 75 gold every day, in theory, <laughs> or every 24 hours. You think? But eventually, but eventually I'd flood the market, which would reduce their price. Also, they might run out of supplies, because every 24 hours I'm just walking by and going, Yeah, here's 75 gold, I need materials. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like for a week straight, a guy comes in at the exact same time every day, and three days worth of ingredients, and then comes back the following day to get three more days. Right. The fuck was that noise? I thought that was the final the demon that we were probably gonna have to fight. Yeah. I changed the picture on the damnation. I saw. Maybe that's the guy you're fighting. How terrifying would that be? Mm. Oh. Change, the, change the picture on the damnation. Mm -hmm. Oh god. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. In case in case Marv's die Marv dies, can I play an Arcana? Or uh, I, what are they called? Artificer? Artificer? Yeah. What is it? It is on D and D Beyond. Beyond. It's basically it like you know how like, you know how, like the gnomes in or, or Tome of, Tome of Foes, Foes are all about inventions, like making little constructs and stuff. Mm -hmm. basically, it's basically, that's what an artificer is. They invent, they make magical items, basically. Right. I think I remember looking at that whenever you were creating Mar. They have, or they released the second edition of the artificer and put him on D and D Beyond. It's actually really cool looking. I'll take a look at it. But let's try not to kill Marv. I mean, you're already on character four. Yeah. I'd, rather I'd rather I'd rather Marv not die, especially just because you know he's pretty fun to play. You know, I'd, I'd rather him not die. <laughs> that and I'd rather I'd rather make it one more level because if I make it one more level, in theory, I will be able to take three attacks and not take any damage. In theory. In theory. In theory. Because, because uh, I have upsetting, upsetting visage, which means that someone has disadvantage on an attack against me. I've got, what was it, Empathetic Ward that also gives someone disadvantage on attack on me and an advantage on my next attack on them. And then if I pick up Tomb of Lephistus, I'll be able to case myself in ice until my next turn. Tomb of Lephistus. We'll see what happens. Um, I, I'd, I'd rather make it to the next level than die. We'll see. I, we may be getting up on a level up. Who knows? We'll see what what you guys decide to do. If we manage, if we manage to kill all the dwarves and survive, how many levels is that worth? If you can kill everybody in the city, uh, you'll become level fifteen. So <laughs> that's the ultimate challenge. <laughs> kill everyone. How do you feel if we actually successfully killed everyone and no one died? <laughs> I would I would call the end of the campaign and re reassess my DMing skills. So <laughs> that's, that's just make the next party hunt down the previous party, yeah. <laughs> slaughtering an entire, an entire genocide. <laughs> oh my god! Um, oh my god! Yeah, this whole portion of the story, Jeremy. All created for your guy. Like I said, I'm this this fucking this robot's not doing it for me. I miss my dwarf. <laughs> I even went with the accent that you had. The whole nine yards. I think I think, uh, I think he should come back. Maybe he will, but he'll be in my hands, not yours. No, you uh, could do. I think this be... robot should just not. You don't like the idea of a samurai robot? I, I, just, I, I just don't. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a role play character. I'm, I've, always, I've been always been a dwarf. Thought I like, thought I like being a robot. I don't. 
Well, you haven't even given the robot a voice. You've just been talking normal. I don't know. I don't know what, yeah, I don't. I don't know what the. F- the fuck a robot sounds like? I feel like you shouldn't say anything. Google search. Just walk around. Google search it. What the fuck was that? Uh, it was a can of air. I scared me. I'm cleaning my balls off. Nice. Are you a carpenter, Are you a carpenter by chance? Uh, you know, concrete guy. Why? What do you need? I was kind of thinking about building a table for our next, uh, IRL D and D, you know. I can build tables. We have a little battle. Yes, I can. I can build. You can build a table and cut a hole in the center of it. I can put a TV in it with a little, just basically just a TV in it. Jeremy is a carpenter, by the way. Build a table. Wait, you're a carpenter. Wait, you're a carpenter? <laughs> put my wiener in it. Yeah. <laughs> we should build a table, dude. I got, I got, I got some money. I can buy some lumber. Yeah, just get but Jeremy you. doesn't have all the equipment to do all that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. You have a table saw? I need a table saw, skill saw the shit out of it. <laughs> it, doesn't it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, as long as, as, long as we sand down, down the edges so it doesn't give anyone splinters. Ah, oh, fuck that. I want people to get splinters. <laughs> <laughs> I will sawzaw every, every edge of that table <laughs> so it doesn't <laughs> bud splinters. <laughs> oh, my God. Get the shittiest grit sawzall blade I possibly can. <laughs> Anthony, you're back. Yes, I am. What's up? You're out of it today. Yeah. Yeah. Just other shit on my mind, man. Man, that sucks. Well, it's, well, it's, it's really not a bad thing. I've had to stop a few times talk to Tracy because uh, this, uh, this uh, house came up today for rent uh-huh. thing, is, thing is though we're discussing renting the place with uh, her mom and her brother, her brother Tracy's brother which would be fine but we're, to, but we're trying to figure out the best way to make it work because we have our two kids as well and it's three bedroom but it's like 1600 square foot so it's pretty big mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, so we'll share one room. Because he's a teenager, her brother is uh, he's 17, so basically her mom will have a room, uh, her brother will have a room, and then the master bedroom's pretty big, but then Taylor has her own room with a bunch of random shit. Long story short, we've been talking about that a lot, trying to figure out whether we should do it or not, because we're going to have to do it by the middle of the month. I gotcha. So, so I've been thinking about that a lot. That sounds, that sounds like that would be on horrible. Top, on top yeah, of it that sounds like a fucking terrible idea. It sounds like you need we, a four well, bedroom we've, house. We've lived with her before. We've lived no, with her. Sounds and, like uh, three, three bedrooms out. split out among, what is that, six people? Well, dude, well, dude our, our baby already sleeps in our room every night, right? And then our daughter sleeps in our room more than half the time. But yeah, best, but yeah, best, best case scenario, scenario though, you'll have, what is it, four people in one room and then one person in the uh, each other room. How many bathrooms yeah, is it? Yeah, it's two. The master bedroom has, we have our own bathroom. But uh, they would have to I mean, share we're planning bathroom. on buying a place next year. All our debt's almost paid off, and that'll help us save more money to put a down payment on a place uh, next would summer. It, would, it would it cost you more? To continue to rent there where you're at right now, yeah, yeah, and the sense that we're we're fine either way, but we'd save more if we went ahead and did that. Yeah. yeah. Plus her mom's her mom's like I said we've lived with her before for a couple of years like we lived together it's kind of mutually worked better right but uh we've been here for three years where we're at yeah you're it would be mutual. Mutually beneficial, but it's just yeah, kind of like yeah, yeah. I mean, there's I want to walk around in my underwear and I want to fuck do whatever I want. You want to like, fuck? That's you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Can't, can't, I can't. I want to. I want to yell and scream my head off when I argue. You know, just do it anyway. Instead of <laughs> you want to curse you? while you're playing video games? <laughs> <laughs> if I want to strike my children. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just just yell while you're playing games, and if anyone tries to talk to you, just look at them and go, Get the fuck out of my room! I'm playing Minecraft! <laughs> exactly. Right? So, so that's part That's part of what's on my mind. The other thing is just, uh, I had to do a lot of extra shit today I wasn't planning on doing. I had to go help open a liquor store in Hereford. 
I'm, by open a liquor store, I mean they got their full shipment of liquor today. Stocked it up, it up and I, I got to get up at seven. I know I, I know I don't have to work for about an hour, hour and a half, but I still have to get up fucking early and do it, which is bullshit because Tracy has to be at work at ten. Right. So I have to get up at seven, get ready, go do that, and come back in time to watch them. Right. And then uh, we'll be figuring shit out this weekend. So that's just kind of where my head's been for the most part. That's all right, dude. And then trying to find time to both play this and other things. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no. get away from. And oh yeah, my. I mean, it it's, it hasn't been bad by any means, but you know, also my kids have been super clingy until Tracy finally got home around seven forty-five. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how kids it's are. It's just been a long. It's all right. It's all right. Well, we're going to pick it up. Yeah, it's fine. Like I said, it's, just a, lot. it's a lot. Yeah. So now we're going to continue on. Um, everybody's here. Justin's here, right? Yes, I'm here. Yes, okay. I'm here. All right. So you guys are now in this dark passage. Uh, Jules... Or Ner Nernoth, not Jules. Nernoth, you and Prometheus, you can see the outline of the passageway. Uh, it probably stands about 10 feet tall. Ronan, you're kind of almost scraping the top of this um, tunnel. And it's probably about 20 feet wide. Um, you guys are continuing. The three of you put your hand on the wall. Give me a acrobatics check, the three of you. Ronan and Marv. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I, I am know. doing cartwheels. I <laughs> down, this down, this down this hallway. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say that much. Hold on. Man, come on. Come on, come on, come on. There come we on. go. Yeah, Jules is right there with you. Just walking along. Marv, you on the other hand, you're starting, you're tripping over yourself. Um, was, that was that the other one for the acrobatics? No, you you don't need to take it. You can see fine. Oh, okay. These guys are, are basically being steered blindly through this thing. Um, Marv, you're, you're tripping over yourself. You're having a difficult time in the darkness. Um, and as, as you're going, you kind of slip and then shoot off to the left but there's no wall and you fall down and you hit oh something and kind of slide off am I falling? am I falling? no you're not falling but it's there's like a degrade a downgrade right there so you're sliding down <laughs> this path passageway it's not a fast speed but you can't seem to be getting can any kind of stop myself. Yeah, you can try to. You uh, give me a dexterity check with disadvantage. Okay. Oh, because oh, you're blind, you can't see nothing. Yeah, you're you're having a hard time, and you're you're. It's not like you're rocketing down this pathway, but you're. You know, you're probably moving up at each three or four feet. At a, oh, sorry. No, you're good. Next cycle, you're moving like three or four feet um, every second. Uh, the rest of you guys do hear this scraping sound and this oof as Marv hit the ground and starts moving. This Prometheus, you do see him since you're behind. Yeah. And just boop, go left. <laughs> Can I blitz crank and grab him? Uh, yeah, give me an acrobatics check. My acrobatics is pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, you jump around Ronan and Jules and head down this little pass passageway, uh, grabbing um, Marv by the back of his collar and yes, yes. yanking him up <laughs> um and you what are you gonna do now pull him, back pull him back up okay so you start pulling him and be, kind of be careful kind of start guiding him back to the passageway but now you guys are actually ronan and uh jules stopped whenever you 
started passing them because you like touched them on the way by. But Nurnoth and the Grey Dwarf are still moving. So now there's a 15 foot, 20 foot gap in between Ronin and Nurnoth. And it's getting wider every second. Yeah, it's kind of like you group hug everybody and like move forward, like, hey, no, you, no, you, no, you can't, see, they can't see me, Nurnoth. Let's go this way. Well, not Nurnoth. It'd be Ronin and Jules and Mar. Oh, oh okay. Okay, well, everybody besides Nurnoth. Put, my, put hand my hand on the top of his head. <laughs> okay. My other hand. <laughs> Marv, you're, you were caught. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> oh, I'll look at him and go. You see, this is why you're. This is why you're the cooler of the two. <laughs> Thank you. And Jules is like, what, what, "What's going on, motherfuckers? I can't see shit." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They don't have dark vision. <laughs> oh my God. He's got, I'm gonna pull my blade out. Light it on fire. Oh, God. <laughs> And then I pulled out my gun. And <laughs> he searing smites, adds the flame to his blade. It only lasts a minute, <laughs> but uses a spell slot to do that. Um, I'm gonna use that minute to find my footing and try to get back on. So the path. you guys start booking it towards back behind Nurnoth, and the uh, Grey Dwarf stops and looks back at Jules and says, "Put the light out. You don't want to attract anything." And Jules looks at him. What'd you say, motherfucker? Put that shit, Put out. That shit out. <laughs> I can't see shit without it. I'm just going to put my hand on his shoulder and, and whisper into his mind, you know, and be like, put that light out. <laughs> Get on me, bitch. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Walk with your hand. Where, I don't even, see, I don't even see him on the map. Where is he? Oh, okay. Come on, from the hand. I got out. I think Courtney's done talking. There. He's literally, he's right, literally behind right behind. Yeah, he's right behind you. Oh my, oh my, oh So all these dudes fell down somewhere. No, only Marv did. I fell down. And Prometheus was able to save him, but you and the dwarf kept moving on. You didn't even stop. Uh, and and we hear them. Yeah, fall. you heard him fall, but the gray dwarf didn't give a shit. Okay. He just kept walking. <laughs> you said Jules, you said Jules is right behind. Right yes. Yeah, there's, not a, yeah, there's not a token for me on my screen. What the fuck? What the fuck? It, it, it was like invisible. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, all my old woman. Um, I was wondering. I was like, why is there a gap between me and Prometheus? I mean, what? Well, I mean, what yeah, just tell, I'm gonna tell him put his hand on my shoulder, my shoulder and follow me. Put the light out. You gotta fucking do that. I don't, I don't want to get metal HIV. <laughs> Let's see here. Damn it. Fucking back that again. Can we, can we keep down. fucking going? Yeah. <laughs> I want to get to wherever it is and we're the gray going. Dwarf, Douse the flame. The gray dwarf looks at you and says, "We, If we move with light, we can be seen. It will attract things. Things sounds like you guys have a monster problem. Well, does not everybody tell your friend to put the fucking light out, or I will put him out. Hey, hey, douse the torch. Fine, all you bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and poof now it goes black again uh, Marv you and uh, Ronan well more, most, mostly Marv your eyes are starting to you see those white dots all around um, as the darkness sets in and the grey dwarf taps on you Narnoth nods and Prometheus you push the other you guys start going down the path, um, winding left, right. You see multiple forks along the path, Nernoth and Prometheus, as you're moving forward. 
for the most part, there doesn't seem to be many cracks or crags. Uh, the dwarf now realizes that half of your party can't see in the dark, and so when there is something on the left that you were not to go down, he starts pointing it out uh, for you to inform the blind ones, as he calls them. Um, the blind ones. And he guides you guys down this path. Uh, Nurnoth, you're kind of keeping count as you see these forks, and you're at 20, 21, 22. You're, you guys are moving deep into this mountain. Um, and eventually you start seeing some light coming around a bend. And what you see as you cr turn this bend is a large Dorvan city. Uh, you do now see torches and uh, brazers all over the place that are lit. Um, a hustle and bustle of dwarves. Some with mass amounts of armor, like you noticed at the entrance. Others in black clothing. Um, the whole city seems to be like an ant hill, just ants moving everywhere. Uh, it's very large. As you're standing there at what looks like the entrance into the city, it seems to go on past your vision, um, deep into the mountain. You guys have now made it to Vonrum, the city of the Grey Doors. Hell yeah. Uh, he, the, the leader, or the guard, starts walking away. You guys see six more guards kind of hidden in this pocket behind the entrance. Um, and as you start walking by, you can see that they could see through the rock, but you couldn't see them behind the rock, kind of like see one way glass. Um, and they're all standing, standing around a table, seem to be playing a dice game. Um, a couple of them speak to the, to the guard as you guys walk by in Dorvish. You guys start making your way down these large stone steps into the middle of the city and he leads you to a building built into the stone that's lit up and there seems to be a bunch of hustle and bustle going around and he looks at you and says this is the where you will stay this is the inn talk to the bartender inside he will get you room and accommodations I will be here tomorrow in the morning to take you to see our king if you are not here ready for me I will not wait for you and he heads back up the stairs you guys are now standing in the middle of this marketplace uh, stone buildings all around you a hustle and bustle of gray doors just moving around you don't see any other races as you're standing there um, it's all dwarves what are you guys going to do? Uh, I, I am... Is there any place I can go where I, I wouldn't be seen for about five seconds? Um, not really. There, there doesn't seem to be any kind of alleyways or anything. It's, uh... Everything is either... Buildings are built into the rock and pathways are in the middle. So everything's kind of following this long line. I'm gonna start, inqu I'm gonna start inquiring about the hags. Start asking people about. Hags. Okay, are you speaking in common or dwarf? Or dwarf. Dwarven. Okay. Uh, so you start approaching all these random doors. <laughs> these people. Have you seen the hags? Do you do you, do you know where the hags are? Have you have you seen the hags? And, and people are looking yeah. at you and just kind of like skirting away from you, like, oh, who the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, now, Jenny, don't Jenny, don't, Jenny, don't look at the crazy yeah, man. Yeah. Keep, don't look keep at him. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna inquire about possibly uh, a shop where they can sell me herbs. <laughs> People are not being responsive to any of your inquiries. Uh, these 
these dwarves are now starting to give you guys a wider berth. <laughs> and where was that? Where was that? It's again? right in front of you. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the end. <laughs> Nernoth, what are you doing, Ronin? Uh, uh, can I fit in the door? Uh, if you duck down and kind of go get on your knees and go through. Yeah. I'll the door. Do the door is probably about seven feet tall. The entrance into it. It's wide enough for you, but not tall enough. Um, Nernoth, what are you doing? We're at an inn. We're at an inn You're right? standing in front of the inn out in the street. Yep. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go in and uh, uh, rent, uh, a room rent a room for a night, I guess. Okay. So as you guys enter the inn. Uh, it doesn't typically. It doesn't look like a typical inn that you've seen before, Nernoth, uh, especially in the Human Empire. The Human Empire. It was more lively. There were lots of tables, big fireplace, giant bar, music, that kind of thing going on. Um, this place is pretty quiet. Uh, there are a couple torches hanging around. They're not very bright. They're kind of dim so it's soft music no music at all um you can hear talking there are several stone tables and stone benches it kind of sat around the room uh, about half of them are full of dwarves uh they are either talking to themselves or drinking in silence there's not any gambling going on there's no music going on uh the bar is at the back um, this long s stone uh, bar bar front and standing behind there is a what you think is a female dwarf but she has a long mustache uh, and this long braided gray hair and as she looks at the five of you as you walk in and speaks in dwarvish uh, Prometheus you hear what brings your kind here? Pegged. Pegged. I'm just <laughs> uh, we do not have that. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and telepathically speak to her. I need a room. How much? And she kind of looks up in the air and looks around. Uh, and she's looking more uneasy now. I'm just going to speak to her again. The gray one. The gray one. I don't. I don't speak your language. This is the only way I can talk with you. Ah, uh, you shit the bags only speak common. I got gotcha. you. Uh, what? Yeah, you, you, know, I realized, you know, I just realized. It's only, I, it's only one way for my mental. <laughs> uh, so she looks at the five of you and what? Why? Now she's speaking in common, so you all can understand. What? The, what the brings you here? Nothing. No one's gonna say anything. I, I, don't, honestly, I don't. I don't know why we're here. I just. I just realized it was never really explained to me that you guys were hunting a demon. These meat bags, These meat bags require sleep. <laughs> I need a room. I need a room. Give me a room. I just realized, I just realized no one ever told Marv you guys were hunting a demon for the king. Nope. <laughs> no one ever told Marv. <laughs> Only shit. two people know. <laughs> That that is what y'all's quest is, and now it's all brand new news because Nernoth just told everybody why yeah. you are doing what you're doing. So Prometheus, Ronan, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Marv, you're like, the fuck is this guy talking about killing a demon? <laughs> <laughs> but now Marv, or not Marv, but Ronan and Prometheus, the two of you. Are like, oh shit! We are they excited? Are you excited, guys? Well, you you know <laughs> that there's super a demon excited. in your homeland. Um. Oh. So, uh, she looks at you and says, "It'll be one gold for the night. If you oh. wish for food and drink, it is one gold per night." If you wish for anything else, that is all we provide. I'll go ahead and 
I'll go ahead and throw. I'll go ahead and hand her a gold. She's got a gold from okay. me too. Are there any? Uh, Are there any? Uh, what was it? Is any, like, like, is there any like elderly looking dwarf in there? Most of them look old. <laughs> I mean, think about dwarves. The younger ones probably really are not allowed to be drinking. I kind of just I kind of just want to walk up to a random table stare. and just stare at like at like two two that, two, seem, two that to seem to be sitting together. close together. Okay. So we'll get just kind of we'll get to that here in a sec. Nernoth, Ronin, Prometheus. I'm going to sit down and start gnawing on some foreign meat of a sort. Okay. With a pint of ale. Okay, that'll be another gold. So, deduct that gold. The, what she gives you gold. is pretty tough food. Um, and the ale is strong. Uh, thick, black ale. Um, and it, it burns as it goes down. Okay, uh, Prometheus... I'm gonna chill with Nernoth. Just, just saying, relax the my uh, <laughs> my machinery. Okay, Jules tosses the gold and heads upstairs. So he is no longer with you guys. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So Marv, you walk over. Ronan, what are you doing? You didn't say anything. Uh, I'm, gonna uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna sit at a table in the corner. For a well, night. you can't really find a table that suits you, and she looks at you. You're ducking, and you're in this room. Your your head, it, you're you're kind of like a, you've seen the giants in the small rooms. Your your head's bent over. Your shoulders are scraping the top of this uh, ceiling, and she looks at you, and I don't have anything for you, big guy. I'll just wait outside. I'll just wait outside. Oh. Okay. So you're going to head outside and you're going to stand outside? Yeah. Okay. I'll get to that here in a second, too. Uh, Marv, so you stand next to these two ran completely random dwarves that look older. They're sitting next to each other. They're not talking to each other, but they're drinking their ale. Um, long white beards, um, braided long white hair, both wearing black clothing, from what you can tell. Um, in this dim light, you can't really make out the details of the clothing, but and you're just staring staring at them. Staring at yep, them. I'm staring at them, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take out my book and just start taking detailed notes on how they look. The both of them. Um, one of them looks at you with an eyebrow raised and speaks to you in Dorvish, uh, not in the oh, nicest yeah. of tones, from what you can gather. I'm just gonna kind of wave my hand and speak back to him in undercommon, and just say, and just say, "I'll be out of your hair in a second. And he will reply to you in undercommon and says, "I don't give a fuck what you are doing, but you best get the fuck out of here." I'm just gonna kind of fold up my book, and take one last good look at him, and be like, "All right," <laughs> and head up to my room. Okay. So Nernoth, you and Prometheus are sitting at the table. You're kind of hunched over. You're still too big for these tables, Nernoth. Um, and your the food is nourishing enough. It's not very tasteful for you. Um, is there anything that the two of you want to talk to each other about, or? Yeah. So, I don't think either one of us need to rest, so... What do you do with the food when you eat it? <laughs> I just go like this. I'm num num. I just act like I'm eating it. Don't not, actually eat it. Do you not get a little rusty in there? <laughs> I, just bust I just bust up my oil. You, know? you lubricate <laughs> yourself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. Yep. Weird. It weird. It's it's normal to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. 
Uh, he lubricates you? himself, guys. You uh, lubricate I mean, yourself ever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of like the Tin Man in Wizard of Oz. You just have this little oil thing, and you're just constantly like... Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's in my like uh, my pouch. Ask people to, ask people to lubricate you. You could say that I lubricate myself. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm particularly fond of the Fae. Those little fairies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <sighs> what do they put in this beer? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> is, fire, fire, is that fire. it? So we'll. That's it for me. If y'all don't me. want to do anything for this tonight, we'll say after you eat. I, I, got I, I got one more thing I want to do. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll get right to that. Hold on. Uh, Nernoth, you and Prometheus, after you, the two of you get done, you can go up to your room um, if that's what you want. If oh. there's something else you want to do. I, I want to. I was. Yeah. So, uh, Prometheus. Prometheus, is it right? Yeah. Yep. Prometheus. Yeah. Uh, why are you following? Why are you following us around? I feel like you can, help, like you can get help me hags. get the hags. Do you know where these hags are? I do not. You think we do? Nope. Nope. I know you don't. I know you don't. Well, we do. Well, we do, actually. Where are they? They're gonna. They're gonna be. This cast. This cast. This cast. What? Do what? You, do you. Do you not? You know cut out. That we. That we, we caught you up. We caught you up. The, I said you will. You what? cut out your mic. What did you not hear? Cut out. You, you said they will be, and then it cut out. They will be where Cassus will be, is what I said. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. You'll help. So you'll help us then, eh? We're all yeah, we're all helping each other. What's it for? Why? What? Why? Why do you want the hags? What is this for? It's my mission to get the hags, I, I really don't remember. To be honest. Alright, that's, all. Right, that's all I have to say. Do you want to bring up Prometheus about the demon from in that lives in your homelands that is controlling the hags? No, no, I really just don't remember all that stuff, honestly. That's why you write it down. Yes. <sighs> <laughs> it's okay. So it, taking notes is for nerds. It's to make sure that you remember for conversations like this. Um. Okay, so the two of you have your conversation, Ronan. As you head outside, um. You're standing there. You're getting quite a few looks from the doors. I mean, you're almost two and a half their size, uh, most of them. And quite a few are giving you looks, even the ones that are fully armored. Some of them are walking around with halberds or shields and flails or a, a whole genre of weaponry. Um They, what are you doing? Are you just gonna stand there yeah, vigilantly? Just gonna, yeah, just cause. Yeah, yeah. Move, stand there, not move. Wait till they wake up in the morning. Come outside. Okay. Um, while you're standing there, you see what looks like to be a a child that comes up to you and is staring up at you, and they're probably about four feet away from you. 
Is it a boy or a girl? Give me a perception check. <laughs> what are you, little thing? Fucking Professor Oak. Are you a girl or a boy? Yep. Yep. What is that total? Uh, uh, ten, I think. <laughs> oh, actually, it's oh, actually, it's thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, yeah. It looks like a little boy. Some, uh, some, uh, down. kneel down. Ask what he's doing. Ask what he's doing. He kind of backs away as you kneel down. And, you know, it gives you one of those, I don't trust your looks, but I am here wanting to know what you are. I'm a, I'm a man of metal called a, Warforged. called a Warforged. And why are you here? Just coming to check, Just coming to check this place out. From, come from a land far from here. And what the land is that? The Kurgit Empire. The Kurgit Empire. Hmm. My daddy tells me that the Kurgits are all shit. Just depends. Just on depends on perception. your perception of them, I guess. So the do, humans are. The humans are. So do they look like shit or what? Human, human, humans tend to. Huh. And you are not human. Are you living? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hmm. And you see this woman dwarf, which you think is a woman dwarf, come up, kind of grab the child, speak to it in dwarvish. Um and pull the child, and the child waves at you as it goes, and is looking up at its mom, or his mom, and speaking to, it seems to be very lively about what he, the conversation he just had, you just made this little kid's fucking day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, wave, I'll wave back at him. <laughs> and um, for the rest of the day, you kind of sit there staring, but give me a perception check. Um, Nernoth, you and Prometheus, is there anything else before you head to bed? And then Marv will get to you. Dear God. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. I'm good. Y'all will head to bed. Marv, what are you doing? I think you kind of know what I'm I doing. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> He's, basically, He's basically, basically, I want to remember. So the two dwarves in my head, I want to remember them and try to become a form that's both of them combined. <laughs> their looks <laughs> uh right then choose change my appearance yeah so i think you just do it automatically perfectly don't you yep yep so basically, you basically i, I want to use one of them kind of as a template but then change a few things like change the eye color you know to what looked like the other guys They're all gray change the Eyes are gray. Eyes are hot, hot. <laughs> skin is gray. Hair is gray skin uh, is the gray. hair was white. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, and you got to give us your best Russian accent. Uh, <clears throat> I can't do an accent at all. Fuck. And then, all right. So the next morning, Ronan, you're standing there, just silent. Wait, I wasn't oh, done. Sorry. And after that, I basically yeah. want to go out and acquire and a inquire about a herbalist shop speaking in Dorvish. Okay. Who are you gonna ask? I'm just gonna ask. I'm just gonna ask some random people at the bar. Uh, they look at you and kind of look you up and down, and they say. Well, why the fuck do you not know? Yeah, tell them, uh, yeah, tell them uh, what was it? Not from here, not from here just visiting family. Uh, give me a deception check. Ah, I get to make it with advantage since I'm disguised. Let me see. I, Let that, me see. Actually, I, that actually does say that. Give me a second while I pull it up. Uh, yep. Okay. So, that one. Deception. Deception. Holy shit. 
27. Um, if they're able to beat that, I'm very scared. <laughs> well, <laughs> the thing is, is that gray doors only live in one place. And you're in the only place that yep. gray doors live. <laughs> well, if, they ask any, if they ask any further, I'm just going to tell them I left a long time ago. I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> okay, we'll say that that's part of your deception. And they'll say... They'll kind of... Eh, maybe maybe you're just crazy. <laughs> they, they tell you... One of them tells you that the herbalist shop... Uh, that you could find a herbalist shop in the marketplace towards the south end of Vonrum, which is uh, right. past the king's palace. Okay, I'll, Alrighty, I'll earmark that for later, and I'm going to go ahead and go back up to my room. Okay. Um, and then just sleep, in that, sleep in that form. Perfect. All right, so the next morning, that same guard comes, and Ronan, you see them. Everybody else has kind of woken up, made their way down into the uh, tavern area, and there's nobody there. The bartender, it's not the same bartender. It's another, it's a male now, what you think is a male, with a very long braided reddish beard uh, in the light. Um they guard comes in, looks at all of you and says, Come, follow me. And guides you guys out into the street. Now the street isn't as busy as it was whenever you first showed up. Uh there are a few dwarves meandering around that aren't in armor, but most of the people that you see walking around are guards. Um he guides you down this long path, which seems to be the main road that goes through the Dorvan city, and leads you to this extremely large Dorvan head that is carved almost pretty similarly to the head that you saw at the entrance of the mountain. Um, there are several guards in that same black armor that you saw uh, Taurus wearing um, each one of them holding a giant hammer uh, each hammer though looks different than the last hammer uh, no not one of the hammers are the same in design size uh, runic patterns um, and the guard guides you guys up these long stairwell into this large room where you see a very uh, noble looking gray dwarf kind of sitting on this large stone chair up above. He's probably about 30 feet higher than you and there are a couple of other dwarves standing around him, kind of wearing the same reddish uh, rose or black la rose. And there's one dwarf that is standing kind of behind the chair uh, that's in full plate black armor. Um, and did you, where did you get that art from? Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, that, I think I just Google searched. So... Um, and the guard looks up and says, I have brought the travelers that Taurus has allowed into the city. They are here to speak with you, King Krongrum. And he bows very deeply and walks back. And now the five of you stand there looking at this um, dwarf king and he looks down at all of you mm. what brings you to my city demon killing well 
I always have to be the lead guy. <laughs> you're, you're the only person who knows like all the full details. Yeah, too bad Kevin's <laughs> not here. Actually, not true. <laughs> I'm searching man, I ain't gonna fucking tell him. Hey, this isn't. I'm DMing. I am looking for a man named Cassis. I've caught wind that he might be here. We are on an errand from the king to investigate the, uh, I guess you could call trade, slave trade. He stares at you. No expression on his face. If you want to try to check him on an insight check, you can. I'll go ahead and okay. insight that bad boy. I should have. I should have slide advantage on one second. Tight inside. There we go. Anybody else, Ronan? Yeah, I'll, I mean, yeah, I do. I do it. I do it. I do it. I do it. Oh. Oh. Prometheus. Yes, yes sir, I have to bring it back up. Oh, you're good. One second. Prometheus. So I got, so I got 19. 19. My thing was, my thing was scrolled up to my nat 20 earlier, and I was like, fuck yeah. And it scrolled down. <laughs> Um, nothing. Like the stone that's Nobody. all around you. There's nothing to yeah. be read on this guy. Uh, I don't. Read I don't read him either. Oof. Oof. Cool. He looks at all of you. Do you perhaps have a letter? From Robert. Something new. Allowing you to be here on his testimony. You do? I'm pretty sure I do. Well, well I'm gonna look at them because I'm gonna. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of point at Nerna. <laughs> King's, King's note. Yep. King. The king's note. You want to read it? <laughs> I'll, pull, I'll it pull it out and show it to him. Let him, Let him read it. Order. By order of the king of Walpole, those that bear this note are granted passage to Hedeby Castle. Those were once criminals amongst the party are pardoned. Oh shit, oh, shit. does that mean I'm pardoned for those murders? <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of waves a finger at one of the guys standing by the chair. And you see him run behind the chair and then going down the stairs behind and comes running around the side, uh, puts his hand out for the letter, uh, which I guess, guess you do hand to him. He takes it and runs back up the stairs and uh, holds it in front of the uh king's face now he he's not moving he's just standing there with his staff underneath his hands and his only his eyes seem to be moving as he looks over it well this is for head to be not vulnerable let me think about this just that is the proof of our kids, Aaron. It's the, only it's the only thing I can provide. Save that we've traveled all this way to get here. Jules whips out another note. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I've got... I got this, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he called the game, motherfucker. <laughs> is this how Jules dies? <laughs> And he holds out another note, and you guys see a, uh, here, I'll show you. You see this symbol that's kind of been wax sealed on it. The wax has been broken. Um, you guys can give me a religion check. 
if you want. Uh, wait, why, wait, why did I? Oh, that's right. I was like, why am I proficient in religion? And then I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's right. Uh, 14. Okay. Yeah, you all recognize the symbol as the symbol of Sargonis. Um, and he again the king kind of waggles a finger and that guy and just runs over takes the thing and runs back up and he holds it out and he looks over it and the note says seek out the slavers and where they are sending slaves um, and he looks over it and nods his head mm. a paladin of Sagonis well perhaps I will give you three days to investigate these claims if you cannot find anything or prove to me that these rumors are true I will put you in the dungeons if you bring me proof you will have I word that we will help destroy these things three days and that is it and he waves his hand a couple uh, of the black armored guards move forward they're not aggressively moving towards you guys but it looks like now it's time to get the fuck out nice um i just realized i'm still one of them 12 people come 12 guards <laughs> get the fuck out <laughs> guys out please breath. leave now's our chance please leave <laughs> uh keep doing this. you Everybody give me a perception check right before you leave. Um... Persona! God damn it. No, no. There we go. Nernoth. Oh, jig while I'm looking around. Uh, Prometheus. Um, we got 13. And you, Ronan. 15. Ronan. The three of you uh, see that... One of the other guys that's kind of standing behind the chair looks exactly like the guard you met at the front of the entrance. Um, probably one of the other quote unquote brothers. Um, mm. And he, as you guys are starting to walk away, he walks over to the grandfather and seems to be talking to him. Uh, you are escorted out of the throne room, out into the large stone steps, and that is where we will call it a night. Nice. We're all gonna die. Probably. Probably. Yay, Jules lived. I'm so glad. I like how no one questioned the fact that there was just a random dwarf walking with them. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. I completely forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they're just like, well, I guess he's just here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm surprised you didn't figure out what I was planning when I was like, I'm going to stare at them and take notes on their appearance. I figured I figured that's what you were going to try to do. and You're just checking them out because it's one of the gays. It may, it may come up We'll see. Um, God, being a changeling would suck. 
Because whenever you change forms, you, you slowly become that person, you know? Or like that person. Mm -hmm. So if you became a woman, you just that would I feel like that would psychologically fuck you up after a while. Probably. That's probably why changelings are so messed up. Also explains why I made a pact with Hadar the Dark Hunger. <laughs> so what do y'all think? Y'all got three mm -hmm. days. That's three. not very long, dude. Yeah, we're gonna die. <laughs> we're gonna die. Three, three days, short, it's right? either dungeon or they help. <laughs> well, good thing I live for eternity. Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious there's something they're afraid of in the dark, though. You know, I just realized, in theory, I could get out of the city. In theory. Because I am proficient in forgery. I got advantage on deception rolls. All I have to do is figure out how to fake an official document from him. Forge it. And I can get out. <laughs> I can literally create an entire person through documentation. We'll see. Antonius, anything?